Okay. Thanks very much. Um, most of you know all of this anyway, but I've got to go through the official spiel and then and then become a bit more human. Uh, so, this is a meeting of the council which has been held remotely. The meeting is being recorded and streamed via YouTube, where members of the public are able to watch the meeting. Uh, please do note, however, that any comments uh, filed on the chat feed of the council's YouTube, YouTube page during the recording of this meeting will not be monitored by the council. The recording will be available to the council's uh, website following the meeting. All members have been provided with the remote committee guidance note prior to the meeting. Uh, please can, the, uh, can these be adhered to during the uh, remote meeting at all times. These points in include, but are not the, uh, the definitive guide. So all mo mobile devices should be on mute, should either be turned off or set to mute so that the meeting is not interrupted. Uh, and can you please switch your own uh, profile to mute on, on, on the call unless you, you are invited to speak? That's not, we're trying to shut you up. It's just to avoid unnecessary background noise. I and mean, when there's quite a lot of people involved, that can be an issue and cause it, yeah, problems. Uh, if you wish to speak, please raise your hand in order that I'm aware you wish to speak. I'll make a note of you and I'll make sure we come to you if at all possible. Um, for each item, officers and guests will um, present the report and the committee will discuss it. Um, if the, Well, we haven't got any group leaders or deputy group leaders present tonight, but if we had or if they join us, they could be asked to contribute to the committee as well. Um, on a more informal way, I just say we've also got the chat button. So, you know, uh, if I miss you or you want to ask a question via that medium, fine, please do. Um, and again, we've before getting to the uh, meat of the, the meeting, um, just like to welcome our new councillors. So, uh, Councillor Buckley, Councillor Jeffrey, you're very welcome indeed. Councillor Almer, Councillor David Burton Sampson is also very welcome. Um, and I think it would also be uh, remiss of me not to thank the outgoing councillors, um, you know, uh, Councillor Andrew Gordon. Uh, was a really uh, enthusiastic member of the committee, um, was very concerned with mental health issues, uh, the issues of care leavers, and, you know, and, and, and generally uh, got stuck into an awful lot of issues and, and, and really, and it made a positive impression. I'd like to thank Councillor Holliman, Councillor Lawrence as well. I don't know if Councillor Sargent as a remaining member of the Conservative group on this committee would like to say anything more about, about them. Don't have to. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I think all of those people were uh, good contributors. Even though we are told that we we don't engage, we do um, as much as we want to. And like you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to say thank you to them. Thank you, Councillor Sergeant. It, it's a pleasure, uh, as much as we want to. Interesting one. Anyway. Uh, Apologies. Sorry, Councillor Buckley. Yes. Sorry, Chairman, just on a minor procedural point, um, I did just try to um, attract your attention by using the electronic hand when you said raise a hand. So could we just have confirmation? Do you want us to raise a hand on screen or use the electronic hands for indicating? Um, I, my personal experience on Teams, the electronic hand works really well, uh, but on Zoom, not so good. So, you know, I, I know you're all over the new technology, Councillor Buckley, but um, if you could revert to the old fashioned way of sticking your paw in the air, um, then that that would be great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's fine. No. Like, like with Teams, I don't know why. Te teams, it's just loads better, but anyway, there you go. Um, right. Apologies for absence. Doesn't look like we've got any. Um, so that's, that's great. Um, Declarations of interest. Any anyone got any declarations of interest? I haven't. No. Councillor Lawrence used to always have because of Gateway FM and various things, but he's not with us. So um, okay, then let's move on to the minutes, um, which page three to ten on your agenda. Uh, I know it's slightly difficult because we've got three new members, um, but I'm going to have to rather tediously put it to a vote anyway. Uh, in terms of the new members. 
it's up to you. You can abstain because you weren't here, but you are allowed to vote in favour of the minutes, even though you weren't here, if you are satisfied they're an accurate record. So just to go through the process, um, to yeah, all those in favour of the uh, acknowledging the minutes as an accurate record, I'll go through you one by one. Councillor Buckley. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just double check, you did say abstain, yeah? Just nod. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Burton Sampson. Um, it's abstain, Chair. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Fellows. I, I accept the minutes. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jeffrey. Abstain. Thank you. Uh, I vote in favour of acknowledging the minutes as an accurate record. Councillor Sargent. Um, I don't agree with the um, uh, the minutes, Chairman. Uh, one of the reasons for is um, on the last minutes, uh, number one, um, I abstained from the minutes, as did Councillor Lawrence, and it's got that we voted for. Okay. Um, Apologies, I can get that checked for you, Councillor. Yeah, Martin. can we get that checked? I no, mean, I'll be honest with you. I'll make I, an amendment if it's incorrect. I actually, you know, I'll be honest with you, I can't exactly remember. I, I thought you broke with tradition and voted for the minutes, uh, but I, I, I might be mistaken. It's easily checked. We can I, I will do that, of course. We can rectify if it's wrong. So just to I'd be absolutely clear, Councillor Sargent, are you, are you voting against the minutes as an accurate record, even though we've just said we will check them and amend them? As that, isn't, that isn't the only thing that I'm voting against for, but it, I wanted to point that out because that's easily rectified. Yeah, thank um, you. So, so is there any I, other so reason Kevin, you object to the minutes then? So I, I vote that I object to the minutes, thank you. Well, what's the other reasons, Councillor Sergeant? It would be informative to know. Well, on the uh, consultation comment um, reasons, I asked for postponing the meeting. There was none given. There wasn't, I, I did actually suggest that uh, it, it's just mentioned, if you, you can look in the minutes, there was no reasons that, that I actually gave. And um, I suggested that we had um, the consultants come along, which, I ha uh, which is happening this evening. And it doesn't say, we say that. We've hardly done that any quicker, Councillor Sergeant. So I'm uh, not sure what the objection there is. Uh, sorry, carry on, sorry. Well, I, 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 well I, I'll end it there. I've, I've given two... two I'm not being difficult. I didn't quite, the first reason I didn't quite catch it. Um, so if you want to repeat that so that. Um, well, did Annie catch it? Did you catch it, Annie? Yes, Councillor. You got that, did you? Yes, yes, Councillor. And you got the second reason? Um, the second reason, you went on to mute, unfortunately. Uh, well, the second reason was that I suggested that we had the consultants along. Oh, yes, Councillor, yes. That was it, and and that's it. So, and that's why I said it. So, therefore, I, I think they don't reflect um, th that part of the conversation. Thank you. Well, as you know, I've said numerous times before, Councillor Sergeant, this committee, along with every other committee of the council, does not keep verbatim minutes. They would go on and on and on and on and on and on and on, and um, take up a vast amount of uh, council staff's time. So we do a we record the main elements of the meetings. That is not uh, restricted to this meet, meeting. It's every other one. So quite why you keep raising this, I don't know. But anyway, hey, that's life. Moving on, Chairman. I I gave two valid reasons. I didn't take up a lot of time. You're the one that is going on and on. Thank you very much, Chairman. Well, the two valid reasons I've just explained relate to non-verbatim minutes. So unless we have verbatim minutes, not everything is going to be captured. So people could object every single time to the fact that some obscure point is not recorded. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, so item number four on your agenda, uh, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Wayne Hemingway, who's going to provide a 
as members with a detailed understanding of the next phase of our place. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Mr Hemingway, first of all, um, for agreeing to join us at relatively short notice. I know you're a very busy guy um, and I'm really, really grateful uh, for you spending this time with us. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, hopefully positive feedback and certainly a lot of interest in what you've got to say. Uh, for those who aren't as familiar with uh, Mr Hemingway, uh, as you might can I, can, I just, can, I just, can I just say it's Hemingway Design and Sophie is an equal to me at least and she's on as well. Sorry, I beg your pardon. I was going to I was going to come to that as well, but um, obviously, uh, you know, I was just giving a bit a bit of preamble okay. if you don't mind. Um, so, Mr. Hemingway himself, as opposed to Hemingway Design, um, is a member of the Design Council Trustee Board. Is a professor in the Built Environment Department of Northumbria University is a Doctor of Design at Wolverhampton, Lancaster and Staffordshire University, um, which kind of puts DBS's diploma from Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts a little bit in the shade, and my academic record too, to be entirely fair. He should also probably be a, a freeman of the uh, city of Northampton uh, for what, you know, during his many achievements as the uh, co-founder of Red or Dead Fashion Design Company. Um, he managed to make Dr. Martin's the must-have uh, fashion shoe item. Now, you know, I, and I remember this uh, to my cost because they weren't cheap uh, when you were a student. And also, uh, they took weeks to wear in, otherwise they gave you absolute jip. But I won't, I'll try not to hold that against you. But and as uh, Mr. Hemingway quite rightly points out, he's here tonight as part, uh, in terms of his work with Hemingway Design, who have done some fantastic work in, in various challenging parts of the country. Um, uh, I hope that no one will take exception, say, you know, pieces, projects is that, that the company has done. Sorry, Sophie, not leaving you out. Um, in places like Gateshead, Lower Stoft. Um, I, I think you... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think your, your own hometown of Blackburn, as well. Um, you know, uh, and I'm genuinely excited about the fact he's on board, and he really is on board uh, with with the project, and he's ex genuinely excited about it. Um, and all I would say is just to finish off is, despite all his many achievements, like the rest of us, he does have some crosses to bear. He's a, a fanatical supporter of Blackburn Rovers, but. Like I say, we all have our crosses to bear. So over to you, Wayne, and to Sophie, uh, and look forward to hearing what you've got to say. Uh, I'll start first, Sophie, then. So, um, well, first of all, um, evening, everybody, and um, hope you're all well. Um, we're going we're gonna to share, I think, Sophie, you're going to share us, share your screen, are you? Yeah, are you able to um, allow me to screen share, Councillor Aidan? Oh, it's on. Great. Thank you. Yes, please go ahead and share your screen. Thank you. Sorry, Wayne, you can carry on with your preamble. Yeah, so, so just, just so you know a bit about us, we're a, a multidisciplinary design agency. So we do everything from regeneration through to placemaking, through to events, graphic design, brand, all, all, all sorts of things. And But everything we do, um, we have a, a mantra that design is about improving things that matter in life. So everything that we, we do has to have a societal benefit at the end of it. We're, we're never driven by a bottom line. We're driven, but we're always driven by outcomes. We are values led um, and lucky enough to be in that position because we built a business, a red or dead brand uh, in, in our youth and, and we're able to um, sell it to, to give us a position to, to do what we want to do. And that's, do good stuff, I suppose. Um, so we're just gonna, I'm just going to give you between us. We're just going to give you a bit of background to what a place brand is. And I think I think um, if Sophie um, kind of just says a few words about what, what a place brand is. Yeah. So I'm just going to whiz through a few slides. Um, I'm going to just take a base assumption of um, that no one here has any knowledge of place brand, even if you do. It's just easier if we start from a base level of assumed zero, um, so that we can better explain what we're trying to achieve and, and why we're here. Um, so. going to just quickly ask these questions. What is a place brand? What's the goal of a place brand for Basildon and how does a place brand work? So the important thing 
that to start out at the, the very premise is that places don't need brands because places are brands. Uh, you Places have to behave like brands because they're in competition. Um, I think that feels very evident to anyone who's ever applying for, for funding, but also to people trying to attract tourists, to attract businesses, um, to attract great people and great talent to the place. Um, a place brand isn't in any way about a logo or a font. Um, it's not about the visual really, it's about a set of shared values um, and common goals that really give focus to a place. Um, your place brand, it's, it's the image that people hold in their minds about your place. So when you say Babbledon to someone, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you say that? That's what we're trying to get to here. Um, and when we, when you manage to start to change that perception or enhance that perception, you could achieve really important things for two audiences. There's a local achievement, which is, um, it's really uniting, it strengthens communities. Um, having a shared vision of the future means that um, everyone's on the same page, you're understanding what you're trying to achieve. Um, most towns will find um, everyone, you know, everyone wants to work to make Basildon better, but until we know what that means, we can't work to get there. And then there's the kind of external, broader um, benefit of a place brand, which is enhancing that mental image that I already talked about on a kind of more larger scale, um, regionally, nationally. Um, so there's two things there. This is probably, it's 50% for the community and for Basildon, the pe people it's up themselves, and it's 50% for altering that external perception. Um, so the crucial factor in uh, the success of a place brand is in understanding that it's about um, actions, that actions speak louder than words. As I've said just now, it's not about the logo, it's not about the font, it's not about your key messaging, it's about how you act and how you behave. And therefore it's really, really an internal, it's kind of a structural change really, implementing a place brand rather than anything else. Um, how do we get there? Uh, so research and engagement, which has been um, kind of kicked off with the Our Place project. Um, from there, we take data, we take, um, we call it thick data and what's the other one? I've just got a mind blank. Big, big data. Big data, thank you. So big data is the numbers. That's the, uh, the quantifiable stuff. And then we have the thick data, which is the really exciting kind of nuggets of knowledge um, the things that people tell you that only someone that knows about the town will say, the, the real emotion and the real thought and imagination. And we take all of that and we develop it to identify what these aspirations for the place could be, uh, and what the values and personality of the place are. Um, take that all together to form a focus direction and that's what we'd call the Basildon narrative, because this is really all about storytelling. Um, uh, so those three first steps with the yellow blobs, that's what we do. Uh, the next two orange stages, which are crucial in place branding, that's what you do. That's taking ownership and then living the brand and putting the place brand into action. And we can um, make help make that happen too. Um, so we're gonna talk about some of our previous experience in credentials. Uh, I'm gonna head over to Wayne to talk about Blackburn. So, uh, so I'll give you, we'll just give a couple of, well, two or three examples, which, which kind of explain that a bit. So Blackburn is a town that's suffered quite a lot recently and well, over the last, over the last 20 years. Um, and there were, there were whole streets there that were completely empty and the council were able to buy up, um, buy up properties. Uh, one particular street, Town Hall Street, had about 15 shops that they bought up in a row. Obviously, obviously land is a lot cheaper up there than it is in, in the southeast. Um, and, and they wondered what to do with those shops. And so between us all, we, we knew that Blackburn um, had a the, the middle kind of slide there that says Arte by skill and hard work. Art, well, Arte, if you look at Arte Labore, Arte Labore was on my school jacket. It's above the town hall and it's on Blackburn Rovers football shirts. And, and basically it translates as by skill and hard work. And Blackburn has always been a town of manufacturing. It's where the spinning jenny was first used. It's where the Asian community first came over to, to, to bring their cotton skills to, to the UK. Uh, and, and to this day, it continued to be a, 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 um, a, 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 a making town. And so what we did is we, we talked, we, worked, we, we sat with the community on a large scale, both the creative community and, and, and the wider community. And, and we, we, we talked about what could making mean. 
and what could it mean for a town if that's what a town says about itself so we we came up with this idea um called blackman is open um which where, where all of the shops were given a lick of paint on the front and they were all given for a period of time free to uh, young makers who their job was to do what what we all christened performance making so that they would make things in the shop window whether it was making chocolate whether it was whether it was making a bike t-shirts jewelry uh, as long as it was doing something that was a physical physical thing with their hands um, and that would and they had to do that in their window and then people could go in and buy things which were normally in the back of the shop but the, but this idea we, we, we kind of sold it to the media as performance making and within weeks the town center became absolutely packed with families coming to, to look at people doing things young people were, were inspired by it um, that that gave us a quite a lot of publicity and and, a, and really good football and then what happened was the arts council then um, got behind got behind this and helped us uh, well gave us 300 gave the town not us not Hemingway design gave the town 375,000 pounds to open a bigger facility called the making rooms in an old abandoned bank and that was basically a place where anybody from the community whether it was somebody who was making wanted to make part of a train set or or somebody who wanted an overlocker to finish off a, a skirt because they couldn't because they didn't because they didn't have an, an overlocker at, at work to somebody wanting to make a 3d something from a 3d printer so it was old technology to up to new technology for all ages for all backgrounds for all all diverse backgrounds as long as you wanted to make something and that opened and it did really really very well very quickly and and on the back of that another building was opened so that they could become places that makers could could um could could, could hire and and rent out and then that led to what what i think the next slide is it yeah. um and and now blackburn uh, owns and and runs the national festival of making now we were we were able to do that because behind it all as well you know in one of our meetings somebody came up with and we couldn't believe this he said do you know that blackburn has uh, one in five of everybody who gets up in the morning goes to work and makes something and that we thought there's no way in this country there's anywhere you know we don't do that much making and anyway it was true it was actually 20.8 percent and the national average was 10 percent and london and the southeast is seven percent so we were able to then realize that blackburn really is a place that could um you know basically absolutely say we are a town of making and we are the number one making town in the uk and therefore they we set up right okay we're going to now set up the national festival of making which takes place every year in june obviously it didn't do this year and sixty thousand people turn up uh, and, and and that's that story really but it was that's it living its actions there is no logo around um blackburn as a making town um there is a logo around the national festival of making but 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 it doesn't need a logo. It, it it lives by its actions. It's a making town that does things celebratory, real, or you know, it does things around that narrative. And that narrative really helps it. And you'll see quite often now when one of the major news channels wants to do something about manufacturing, you know, it, it sometimes obviously goes up to where the cars are manufactured in the northeast, but very often it goes to Blackburn. And there was that program called um, Make It. Oh, I forgot the BBC program recently, and and all of the opening sequences are from the the, the festival of making. Um, anyway, so let's go on to the, let's go on to the next one. Um, um, so this is just another example, another place that we've recently complete uh, done a place brand. This was 2018-19, uh, Berwick upon Tweed. Um, so that's a place that um, it didn't really know what it was, but it's kind of a, a beautiful border town. Um, on the coast, um, it's very small, um, and so part of the place project there was really just to kind of identify, as it is in any place, that what, what is it about, and so we ended up with these five values and this kind of overarching idea of go your own way, because it turns out it's an incredibly independent place, there's lots of, um, you know, there's lots of different kind of dialects there, because it can't decide if it's Scottish or if it's English or if it's um, Geordie, um that's got a fierce independent streak it's got more um far more creatives and artists and art galleries in it than it should have for a town of its size um and so all of that came out through our research and our engagement and we ended up with this set of values that now informs um uh, it for, for them this it's it's very much a tourism focused uh place brand initially so that's now helping them be 
far better in their place promotion but it will be um you know as the years go on it will help them with lots of other things um onto a bigger one now this is our biggest project to date the city of york um this similar to basildon was a place brand without a uh uh, visual output so it's really just on those values just on identifying the, the common aspirations for the place um, and this is what we end up with and so uh, that you can see on the screen um, and so the city of York is a really good example for how place brand can change perceptions if, if I said to you York right now then I expect that you'd say um, heritage Vikings York Minster um, day trips um, maybe Betty's tea rooms if you know it um, and that's kind of it. That's kind of one dimensional. But what we actually found out is that York is a place that has a huge history of um, working for social justice, of prioritising people over anything else. Um, it's got the Joseph Roundtree Foundation. It had the first ever council estate was in York, the first ever uh, mental health hospital was in York. Um, and it's also having two universities, an incredibly um, impressive centre for innovation. Um, it's got research labs all over the city and in the wider area that are um, making things that will make the world a better place. They're working on malaria treatments, they're working on um, skin grafts, they're working on um, like intelligent crop spraying that doesn't poison the environment, that kind of thing. That, that was just stories that absolutely weren't being told. And so that's our job is to come in and find out the things that aren't being told, but are just going on in, in, the, in the DNA of the city, but that no one's kind of managed to voice enough yet. Um, First Light Festival, should we do, touch on that? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just, is, this, is this the last one that we're doing crew as well? Or? Crew's on there as well. Yeah. So very quickly about First Light Festival. Um, Lowestoft is a town that's really, really suffered some of the lowest deprivation, not, not, not just in Britain, but, but in Europe. And, you know, a, an enormous uh, pro-Brexit pro um, vote, one of the highest in the UK, and, and, and has suffered so much economically when it, since it lost its fishing industry. And, and anyway, we, we've been working in regeneration there and then, we, we, we got together, uh, we were doing a master plan for the seafront, our, our urban design team, and we decided that we'd just get together with, uh, we, weren't, we weren't employed to do a, 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 a place brand, but we thought we'd get the creative community together and, um, and just, just have a, a conversation about what could, what, could, what could it do to brand itself a little bit differently and bring some positive attention. So we were sat in this, this hotel on the seafront and they, uh, uh, just a, a, a lady who worked in, I think she worked in, she had a video company or something, and she, and she just said, one of the things about that I don't understand is, wh when we look out that window there and look on that beach, I go there on Midsummer's Day, knowing that that's the place where the sun first hits Britain and uh, on, the, on the summer solstice. And I thought, what, what do you mean? Is that that's the most easterly point? She said, yeah, that is the most easterly point of Britain. And I said, how, do, how the hell don't we know that that beach there, when, when we all know about, you know, Land's End as the west, and we know that we know the, the lizard as, a, as the south, and we know John O'Groats as the north, how, how the hell don't we know that? So within an hour, we'd come up with, why don't we do a festival on the beach, right on that point, that takes place on the summer, on the week, the closest weekend to the summer solstice, and it goes through the night from 12 o'clock till 12 o'clock, and we call it First Light Festival Lower Stop. And oh, and oh my God, has it been just the most massive success and and on the you know we had forty thousand people on the beach on the beach that day um when they'd never done a festival there of any scale before it was on the one show it was on, on the new, every news channel you can imagine it's just become but now it defines lower stuff and it's it's just lower stuff is on the biggest rise that i've seen since working in margate in terms of things happening today we got some amazing news which i haven't shared with you yet sophie um, about investment that's going into the town, uh, and and it's all based around the fact that it it, see, it, it understands what it's what it stands for now, uh, and 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 it's been it's just been a joy to behold. But it came that idea the the the, the ideas we it's our job to try and bring them out. If we can't, you know, it's not I, none of these are ideas that we've brought to a town. I hope you I hope you're recognising that. But they're there as part of the place, and it's up to the people to bring that out. And then we can do great things if, when it's brought out, but we can't expect to, you know, to, to find these things. They've, they've got to come from the, from the people there, from you and, and, and everybody you represent as well. So on to the next one. 
So just quickly, Crew is the most recent uh, project, place project that we've done. It's actually wrapping up pretty much this week. Um, and it's a really good example of a, a place brand that was never going to be easy. Um, I don't know if any of you have been to Crew other than throw it on a train or know anything about Crew, but it's a place that doesn't really have any self-confidence. It's um, I can't explain to you how bad the survey results were for our initial engagement. I've never seen so many expletives in people talking about the place that they live. Um, and it was really kind of like sad to read that ev like everyone was just saying, you know, there was lots of passion there, but lots of people saying it's not, it's not what I want it to be. It's not what it used to be. It's not what it could be. Um, and so when we first started, um, we, we, we launched with a, with a, with a digital survey um, and that got some really kind of tough negative responses back from that. And then once, once we started doing face to face engagement, we did uh, sectoral workshops, about eight of them. And we did a, evening masterclass and things like that where we're actually speaking to people we started to get out these stories the the stories that are our whole job to uncover and we found out it's a place that's really it is people powered because it has this engineering heritage but that's heritage has left a skills legacy so now they have bentley there they have mournflake they have all these um factories and engineering labs where similar to blackburn people go and make things and they're really they're really um it's got a technical college, which is absolutely fantastic. It's really good at technical skills. It's a place that is, um, it wants to be stand up, stand up and be counted. It's a place for kind of grafters and where people go for hard work. It's not, and it's very much, oh, sorry, proud of it. It's kind of uh, uh, the kind of northernness of it. You know, you think of Cheshire as a county, you might think of kind of footballers' wives and wealth and Rolexes, but crew, even though it's in Cheshire, it's not like that at all it's down to earth it's straightforward um and so in the end it's been a really amazing project where we've found these brilliant stories and now cruise can become a place that's a bit more proud of itself because purely because we've gone in there and people have told us things we've listened and told it told it back to them in in a nicer kind of more concise way um, and that's as simple as it is um so let's talk about Basildon because we talked about another other places. Um, do you want to, Wayne? Shall I talk, or do you want to talk? Yeah. Well, I mean, I can. We'll, we'll go through this very quickly. You, you've done. You, in short, you've you've done the hour place, which is great. Um, but it hasn't. You know, it, it hasn't given us the. It hasn't because it, our place. Our place is is a good piece of research. There's no doubt about that. But it wasn't done with a place you know with place branding in mind it was done it was done for other reasons so it hasn't totally given us the data that we would that we would normally have um to go on and do what we've done in other places so um next slide i suppose um so you know i think we need to, we need now to start to have um the, the, the report suggests that you know it, despite issues around social equality you can you can read that anyway these are our kind of um things that we things that we found out but it yeah, hasn't so, so so we found out kind of lots of facts about Basildon is what we've got we've got um a little bit about how people think about Basildon as a place that they live or work um a little bit about what they think makes it a good or bad place to work but we haven't got that personality yet we haven't got the emotion behind it um you know, you can go through lots of data and like we have and you can get lots of nice figures and facts. But what we need is those nuggets of knowledge that I said, um, the kind of things that people don't even think to say, but then um, just like little threads of information and little um, stories that come out of communities or come out of businesses or come out of someone's experience of being in Basildon or knowing Basildon. And that's the stuff that's going to that's going to help us form these values and this narrative. Um, and so in order to do that, we need to do a bit of further engagement and kind of spend some more time with people because right now we can't come to Basildon, which is a shame, but at least we've got a Zoom so we can pretend to be in Basildon by being surrounded by some some some, some locals. Um, so our plan uh, is to start off by holding two kind of quite, um, hopefully quite big, if, if the turnout's good enough, um, evening workshops. Um, one with Basildon's creative community and then the second would be with the business community and residents and those are workshops that um, we will um, 
we'll set up just kind of again me and Wayne just talk, talking a bit about the project but then over an hour of just the people in attendance just talking about their place guided by us with some provocative questions um we did this recently in a po project in in Boscombe and I think was it 90 people Wayne yeah there was there was not yeah there was 90 people on it in, in Boscombe which is the kind of well it's part of part of Bournemouth and it was fantastic and we again we that was our first big zoom we got more people you can get more people on zoom than you than you can actually get when you when you bring people together because it makes it easier for everybody you know it can be somebody who's at home with the kids it, it does make it a little bit easier but we were worried about whether we would get what we wanted but we really did it was um you know we have to you have to control it a bit not not everybody got the chance to speak but they can but then at least we've made the contact and they can email us after and they understand what we want what we'd like from people uh, and it was a Basically, our project in Boscombe now is is flying again because uh, because because we got the community there to talk, and and, um, in, and so that that's what these two evenings are for. So we'd like you to, you know, it's important that we we don't have a free for all, and we have split them up. So we want one to be just the creative community, and and by that we mean people working in the creative industries, which remember is the second biggest driver of the UK economy. And this is not some small Cinderella set of people who are weirdos it's the second second biggest employer and the second biggest driver of the economy and that can include creative entrepreneurs you know pe people who are doing things a little bit differently so if we get those talking together and, and then and then we get then we get a, the wider business community and any residents that want to join in on the second one um, and and let's see what let's see what we can get pull out of that we, we we you know we need to we are a lot lighter um than we, than we need to be at, at the moment and and just so you understand that we we haven't done that we haven't done the normal uh, engagement that we that we would normally do because that that does cost more money so you know, we, we hope that this will this will give us you know without 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 asking for more money hope this will give us what what we all need out of this and it will it will add to the data that we've got from your uh, from your research so I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That was just a final reminder of what we're trying to achieve, and that's kind of to find out new ways of describing Basildon by using these shared values and common goals. Um, and uh, the fact that, that that can just have that will have huge benefits for the town once implemented for the borough. Sorry, I keep making that mistake. Once implemented. Um, so that's it from us, really. We just kind of wanted, I don't know how much more time we have left, but we. No, well, I think it, at this point, um, th thanks, Sophie. Uh, thanks, the other okay. fella. Um, I think at this point, we'll uh, we'll open it up. We get that off the screen, so, so you know you can yeah. pause that. Because yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have, you know, we have got a little bit more time than normal. Um, Councillor Buckley, I see you. I'll come to you in a second. Councillor Jeffrey. Yeah. Um, just one thing I wanted to say because. I'm probably a little bit more familiar with this with some of the other members, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but um, I, I think um, Wayne alluded to lower staff and, uh, and the announcement, I can't remember if it was today or yesterday, but um, I think it's fair to say that um, that sort of massive investment in lower staff uh, a few years ago would have been unthinkable. And I think the work that the Hemingway design team have been involved with you know is a big part of that and I, I know you're a little modest but I think where Lowestoft is today and where it was a few years ago is is, is very very different um so I think yeah that that deserves acknowledging and the only point before I come to the other councils I would make is in terms of the re research and engagement two things you know take your point about zoom and in some ways it's a bit more friendly and easy to get people on board uh so if you if you could say a bit more about how you see that working uh one of you and also um what can we do as a council to make your life easier to make sure that works and is a really useful session or sessions uh for you well i think that the, the first thing really is is to um is to help us well we, we can't spread the word because you've you know you've got the you've got the gdpr you've got the contacts we don't have we we don't have that we can put it out on that we you know we've got big social media following but that there'll, there'll be a few people in Basildon who follow us but but not many so we need we need whoever are the 
creative for the first one whoever are the creative pr practitioners so that's by the college um you know so that's all ages of, of artists graphic designers architects tv producers photographers uh, people people who have got uh, the kind of slightly left left field bars um anything any this the slightly left field anything that feels slightly left field really and, and and more on the creative side we'd like to get all of them together and then for the second one um basically that's that's throwing it open to to every business there is and, and every person you know we, we need it to go by the local radio if you want me to come on and and do a little piece on the radio I'm more than happy if we need to do a piece in if we need to do a quick interview in the local paper or, or whatever then then if, if you're allowed to if you've got an email um a newsletter going out um you know to to, to the, all the residents of, of Basildon in the next it's not long off is it so in the next week um then then let's get it on there and um and let's just see how many we can attract to it, it you can only have a yeah, yeah, I think you can have a hundred on Zoom at a time, and and if and if the demand was if the demand demand was massive, then let's do another one. You know, let's you know let's do what we can. I'm just gonna, nice. My pen's run out. I'm just going to go and get a pen. So carry <laughs> okay. on. Right. Uh, thanks very much for that. I, I don't know if um, if Wayne can hear us at the moment, but I, I assume Sophie can. One of the things I'm quite keen. Uh, Oh, he's back. I was just going to say very quickly, one of the things I'm quite keen to achieve is as much input from young people as possible. Yeah. Because obviously we're looking at a, a branding exercise, a, a, a real proper consultation, and we're, we're looking at doing things that are going to affect people for a very long time. So it follows logically that the younger people are going to be more impacted by this. So the more input from them, the better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So anything else that it's kind of hard because obviously we, as Wayne said, like you, you have that kind of the contact details, but anything that we can do to get to those slightly harder to reach groups, I mean, like young people um, and more diverse voices, um, all the, the people that don't normally show up to these kind of things, obviously their opinion is incredibly valuable. And sometimes also, you know, someone might, might want to come onto a Zoom and not speak, but then they email us later and say something, and that's fine as well. It's just about them being there and knowing that the process is happening and knowing that their voice is genuinely valued, that we read absolutely everything that anyone ever says in any of these processes and we listen to everything too. So I think, yeah, any anything you can do to help get the word out to the non-usual suspects is, is incredibly valuable. Yeah. No, I think I think we can do that between you know between us. I think we can do that. Anyway, um, I think Councillor Buckley was the first one to indicate. So over to you, Councillor Buckley. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I pose a question to, to to Wayne. It's not one that's really directly relevant, but I'm certain you presented to me before on some some schemes, and uh, I'd be interested if you could remind me where it was. It was the Red or Dead link that. Uh, tick the box for me but uh, and I can't remember what scheme you presented I'm not sure whether Sophie was there or not um, on, on to the substance I thought you, the projects that you've actually um, been involved with look very interesting and very innovative and I think that that is very much of a positive um, I wonder though how much these things spread and there was mention of Blackburn. Well, I've never been to Blackburn. All Blackburn means to me is a place with 4,000 holes. Um, and if you're old enough, you'll know where that came from. Um, Basildon, people address as Bas Vegas. And I, when I do work, which is not very often nowadays, you know, people will say, that's, that's Bas Vegas, that's the Hollywood sign, you know, those sorts of comments. Um, and I appreciate what we're trying to do here is much deeper than that. Um, but what does brand Basildon actually mean? Now, I appreciate this is coming from your research, but I suspect that you will find if you're looking at the whole borough, and I hope you are taking into account the whole borough, you will find quite differing views of the way Basildon itself and Basildon as a borough will, will look at itself. Um, building on the, um, the activities that go on here, Predominantly, Basildon is SMEs. Um, we have a few large employers in the motor industry and in 
backroom finance and so on. Um, and I, I, I'm just finding it difficult to draw a link between those and it, if you like what you're saying about um, the, the manual, making it here and that type of logo. Um, Hats Basildon got an X factor, I really, I really don't know. We've got some talented people, but whether we'd ever get past Simon Cowell's another story. Um, doing things differently, yes, I think we should do things differently. If you're going to make a brand, it needs to be a unique brand. Um, I was interested about the comment about weirdos. Uh, perhaps Wayne's in competition with Dominic Cummins for employees, but uh, who knows? Um, the chairman used the expression, what can we do to make things easier for you, which I think was a very valid point to make. I'd also put the question to you, what can you do to make it easier for us to develop this brand? I'm going to leave it there before uh, everybody else gets cut off. So do you want, do you want us to answer that last one? or? Um, I, I mean, at this at this at this stage, you know, there's another the, the stage about you know what can we do to help you with your brand. We can only you know what what we can only do is first of all let's fight, let's see between us all if we can come up with a brand. You know, you can't. We've never come across a place yet where we've not been able to to bring out the essence of a place. But you never know. <laughs> you know, we you you don't know. We the, the, the task now is is to start to bring out the essence of it, and once you've got that essence, then there are so many things that we could help you with um, to, to help bring that to the fore and to start to embed it. And, but, but we're not at that stage yet. But hopefully, you know, we, hopefully, you know, by showing you what we did with, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, Town Hall Street in Blackburn to the making rooms, to the festivals, you know, all of those are things that, that start to make a place tick because it understands what it has to, you know, what, it, what is ticking. Um, but we're not at that stage yet, you know, far from it. You know, we're, we're not even off the starting blocks, really. We, we haven't, you know, we haven't found anything in the data so far that says, right, here we go. This is, this is something, this is a seam of, a, of, of this is a, a really good seam that we can all start to mine together to see if it really does work. So what we're not, we're just, we're, we have to hold on our hands and our heart. There's nothing there at the moment. Yeah, can I just come in very briefly? Um... I mean, I think to be fair and to be honest, we don't want anyone coming in at this point with an idea about this is what it's going to look like. We want you to have those conversations, to talk to people, have the confidence in our residents and our businesses that they will embrace that and go with that. And at the end of it, we'll come out with something. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. no offence, Wayne, we could have saved a load of money, couldn't we? Not that much money. Yeah, you know. and, and, yeah. and the thing is, you, you wouldn't want anybody coming in from the outside but our job is to facilitate you and 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 you know and and the many people who who live work you know the wider diaspora of of, of Basildon Borough that's our job is to bring that out and that's our skill you know it would be totally false what you've just said would be a t some towns do 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 that you know but they and there are agencies that will go around and and and, and come up with a brand and come up with a lot of bullshit words but we, that is not us this has got to come from you. When I say you, I'm talking about Basildon. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and also to be fair, and I think Wayne touched on it earlier, is we are, you know, and I take Councillor Buckley's point, you know, it's Basildon Council, but there's Billericay, there's Wickford, there's Pitsy, you know, uh, all the rest of it. And there are, there are issues about how much people in parts of the borough identify, et cetera, et cetera. But again, I think Hemingway Design have worked in other areas that that is also true of. Um, yeah, yeah. We're not most using... places, yeah. Most places are like that, you know. Uh, and there's, there's, there's going to be all sorts of differences between, you know, the views that people have about life, you know, the, the amount of money that people have got. And, and, but, but ultimately, you know, you, you're never going to bring every single person along. There's always going to be somebody who says that's a load of rubbish, I, you know. But, but the, the thing is that we... You, you can, so far, we've always been able to find a consensus, but there's always a first time. <laughs> well, 
I'm hoping. I'm really hoping it's not in Basildon, <laughs> to be honest with you. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'm sure. I, I'm absolutely confident it won't be. I'm absolutely confident. Um, and in terms of the creative uh, types, I think yeah. Again, I think we can do that. I think uh, get you know it's one of those things about Basildon that people don't appreciate, and I, I think Council Buckley alluded to it. The amount of of entrepreneurs. If, for, uh, for want of a better expression we've got, is phenomenal. You, 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 Council Book is absolutely right. 80-odd percent of really small SMEs, you know, micro-businesses. So it's all there. It's all there. We've just got to tap into it uh, and make sure the outcomes are there. Anyway, I think Councillor Jeffrey has been waiting to come in, so over to you, Councillor Jeffrey. Oh, my uh, question's been answered already. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Oh, that's handy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, actually, I just uh, uh, Councillor Buckley's comment about uh, having perhaps encountered Hemingway design before. Um, you might want to mention because uh, you did some work in Landon, obviously. Uh, not. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, we did. We 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 worked on the vision and the and the first design, the first part. Well, the vision really for for Landon, you know, the shopping centre when it and. Um, so we we worked with Swan Housing on on all of the first first design. Is that is that where it came from? Yeah, that would have been where I met you. We were we initiated it sat, well, quite a few years ago, and uh, at long last, it actually appears to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, I think we might have met. I think we met in the library, and I, I remember now. That's it. I, that's it. We met in the library. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't like to be rude, Councillor Buckley, but I didn't think the connection was ever going to be red or dead. No, just saying. Um, count on <laughs> council fellows. I think I think you were waiting as well. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's been partially uh, answered. Um, I, I like to point out the obvious in such circumstances. Um, we now the fifteenth of uh, July. And the two meetings that Wayne has indicated. Um, we're going to have to run pretty quick to get the communication out there and to get the feedback, so we know. So we're actually going to have anyone attending those two, two meetings. Uh, yeah, that's it's the invites have already gone out and I've already had some responses to next week's. Um, okay. it's, a, it's a good point. I know it sounds very close, but actually in these times, that's what you want. We don't want anyone to kind of put it in their diary three weeks away and then forget what it is. We want to kind of we intentionally kind of kind of build momentum. Um, so we've um, our designers have made like a graphic asset, which is shareable and has gone out already to the creative community for next week's and they're being encouraged to share it amongst their own contacts as well so very fair concern but we're optimistic that um this is the way to do it okay second part there mr chair is um what is the uh the duration of the hemingway project from start to de de delivery That's not, well, it's not, yeah, Wayne can do it. <laughs> well, if, it, it, I suppose it's a speed at which, we, at which we can we can all feel that we're getting somewhere. Um, and we, we're not the kind of company that, we've got, we want to do it right. Um, I'm not saying we've never gone back and asked for more money because, because we, we felt that there's a, that there's, there's another route that's that we need to all um, go down because we haven't got where we want to get. But it's it's usually it's nearly always less less about that and about well we need to take a little bit longer on this because because really you know you you've no this is not like aiming that um, we've got to get a place brand out for Christmas so that Father Christmas can arrive or something. This is about doing it right. Um, it's not um, because you haven't got a. It's not like when you design a marketing campaign because you, you because you have to get it when when a new shopping centre opens or something like that. This is about this is about the future of a of a community of a community really and how it feels about itself. So I think the main thing is we just we just make sure that everybody that we're doing it right and we're bringing people along with us. That, for us, that's the main thing. Just going back to the timescale, I think it's a good point. It is quite a tight timescale, which does give us some challenges. Uh, so what I would ask all, all, everyone uh, on this call, and please extend the information out beyond uh, those on uh, members of this committee, 
uh, any suggestions about the creative community, the business community, please feed them in to myself or Joe or both. Um, and, you know, we'll get on with get, get, get it cast in the net. I, I think, I, you know, it is tight, but sometimes things are better when it is tight because you have to move straight away rather than prevaricate about, oh, should we invite him or should we invite her, you know. Um, yes, Tomash. Good evening. Um, sorry, I think um, Councillor Sarger was before me, um, uh, Chairman, and I'll, I'll come in afterwards. I apologise. I didn't see you, Councillor Sergeant. I obviously saw you waving then. And I know DBS was waiting. I don't know who's first, but I'll go to Councillor Sergeant first. I'll put my hand up. I know you said to... Um... I know you said to indicate, but I thought while the others were talking, anyhow, um, Wayne and Sophie, yeah, thank you very much for your presentation. It's a shame because we are really kind of town centre uh, presentation now at the moment, and it just reminded me of those town centre ones, but um, I'm very much into community personally, so this was more community based, and I liked what you had done in those other areas. They're mainly um, sort of northern, right? I'm not very good on geography, but nonetheless, the communities, we are quite similar. And when a community needs fixing, you know, you appear to have brought something to the helm that's, um, you know, fix that community. So one of my questions around, I, I mean, if you let me go on, but I'll just ask them at one at a time. Um, are those lasting? Because that's what we want in Basildon. We really want those projects or the, the brand that you bring to Basildon to have a lasting, you know, a lasting effect on us. So, um, and Wayne appears to have this kind of personality that wants to bring out and do good. So I do believe that kind of personality can sometimes be infectious on, on, on people. In Basildon, we've got a very diverse community which is built and built every year as we go on. And I know the chairman spoke of uh, young people and I too am very, very much for young people because we need to get them moving because they are the, or in, and involved because they are the future of our town. And, um, and I think that's what I would say this is all about. It's about the future of our town. But okay, as well I, I can... as on those young people, you know, there are such diversity, the elderly, the young, all the, you know, the people that's come to join us in our town. So, you know, we need to know that, sorry, if I can finish Wayne, and then you come in um, after. No, my, my, wife, my wife was just saying, what time are you finished? Cause dinner's ready. So I was just telling her I'll be a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I told you you had that kind of personality. I wish I had a light on telling me my dinner was ready. Um, okay, so um, so I, I'm not surprised that there wasn't anything in the data because I, I make nothing uh, of the fact that I wasn't in agreement with the last, um, the last uh, consultation. But I do hope that you can, you know, salvage something from it to, to help you. Um, and I've got another question. Has COVID proved a hindrance? Because we were told at the last meeting that you've got a way of capturing um, the people from hard to reach areas. And, you know, you've said that you need to capture them. And absolutely you do. So if you can, you know, kind of give me some responses to some of that, then that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. So I suppose the, the, the first thing is, you know, you ask about last, lasting impact. And I, I, I'm always totally honest that we, we don't we don't bullshit about anything. We say, we always say things like it is. And with what we're talking about here um, is will be down to whether something becomes embedded and, and, and used. I, I'm going to give you an example of it's when it's owned by people and not and not just a council. So an example of, of a place brand that 
we've only done one place brand that hasn't really become embedded. Uh, and that was because all the way through, they never, they, th this is Middlesbrough Council. Middlesbrough didn't set up um, a board of, 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 that included young people. That there was a, a wide board of people who had bought into it. And it was, the, ca the council always owned, in inverted commas, the place brand. They, they wanted to use it for, to put on banners on, on um, uh, they were thinking more all the time about it being a banner on a, on a lamp post uh, and and so we did we did amazing research we, it was enormous it, and, and, it, and it was purpose-built research and it brought out amazing stuff but in the end everything rested with two people in the council and then one of them retired and and, and, and one of the and the other lady who would have been great she went off to work for, for somewhere else and and, it, and then it was gone because it, because it didn't belong to Middlesbrough. It never belonged to the people of Middlesbrough. It belonged to the council. Now, the, the, the op, a complete opposite of that, you know, is, is, you know, is Lowestoft, where it absolutely, it, it, yes, it's, yes, everything that we're doing in Lowestoft involves uh, the council, but, it, but it's, it's about people. And, and the people there hold the reins, really, and, and they, they get on and do things. And... I, I, so we can't control that. That's down to you. It's down to it's down to who are the people who are going to be with us all the way through this, who are going to give their time, um, who care about the place that they live, have got the time, you know, have got the time to get on and do it, and and are often the people who wouldn't normally be, be elect being elected councillor. But that, you know, because that does take quite, you know, being looking at being on a place brand board doesn't take as much time as you lot have to give week, week in, week out. So it doesn't have to, but it, it, it's down to us all, well, mainly you, assemble, helping us assemble a fantastic set of people who are going to work on this for the next years. And, and when we've gone, because we don't live there, remember, you know, we're, we, we are just bringing our experience and hopefully passing that experience on uh, to a community then who can then go off and do better than we could do because we haven't got the depth of knowledge that you've got. That's, we're getting things started. We're the fire starter, that's all. Um, can, I, can I jump into the, the point of uh, I just uh, you reference um, kind of the original survey kind of being a, a, not a success and I just wanted to say that's not at all what we're saying and um, that our place survey was very much phase one of a long term project and this is phase two. Um, so whilst we're saying we haven't got necessarily the kind of emotional engagement and the kind of um, little interesting quirky stories coming out that we will get from phase two, what we know from phase one is things that like um, I'm just trying to remember we've got I've got a huge report on this that I could that we will supply to you but for example things like uh there's a kind of a sentiment about um people being proud of being different from London um kind of like we're near London and we're, that's part of the reason that we're here but we're not London and, and that's definitely a sentiment that's come through um a sentiment of general contentment which is really nice especially when you contrast it somewhere like Crewe that people will find it like they're happy living in Basildon but no one's there's not you know that people raise concerns about some things but there's no sense of this being an awful place that no one wants to be and everyone wants to get out it's very much what came through it, it is is that kind of sentiment of of content it's a convenient location it's got green spaces it's family friendly it's got the things that you need it's just and that's really useful for us to know because those that means that we don't need to cover that old ground in our in our phase two that means that we've got this base of knowledge from which to build so it's actually really useful and and, and will inform the line of questioning that we use when we're doing the workshops without without having this base knowledge we wouldn't be able to do this this second phase thanks very much sophie you've beat me you've put my point far better than I would have done. Um, as Councillor Sargent knows, a huge amount of work was done. It delivered a, a massive amount of data. That's what it was supposed to do. The next phase takes it into the more creative, interesting area. But phase one achieved what it was supposed to do. And I personally am very grateful to the officers uh, for that. I'm also mindful that poor old Wayne's dinner's going cold. So very quickly, we're going to, if you don't mind, Wayne, or maybe I'll you can handle this. I'll, We've got Tom, I'll come back to you, Councillor Sergeant. We've got Tom Ash and DBS. I didn't have a question answered. Which What's one? The, 
the one on COVID? I said, has COVID proved a hindrance to the consultation? No, it, no, no, it, ha it hasn't at all. I think in a way it's given people more time. We've, we've, a lot of people have got less busy lives, remember. I know that's not for everybody because some people have got jobs to do and childcare and all of that kind of stuff. But for a lot of people, it's given people more time to think. So, you know, the, the one project that we have, through this, we've, 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 we've delivered crew um, and, we're deliver and we're delivering our work in Boscombe. And, you know, I, I don't think it's, and in fact, I know it hasn't hindered it. And in many respects, it's, it's, it's made it a bit more, given us a bit more, it's given people more time to think. Yeah, no, I think that's a really valid point, actually. Yeah, uh, we had, we had, we had, this is really interesting, actually. Because we, we, we put one survey out and normally you would have taken, somebody would have taken 20 minutes to fill the survey out. And, and when you get the, you know how long people have taken on a survey because you get all of that data back, you know, it's telling you all of that. And the, and, um, the average time on the Boscombe survey people had spent on it when we designed it to take 20 minutes was 147 minutes. Now there is no way that people would have done that if they had their normal lives. That was because people have got bloody time to sit in front of a computer for so long. Thanks, Wayne. Thomas, do you want to come in next and then DBS? I'm trying to get everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, just a very quick one, because I'm conscious of time and um, we've got so much more business. It's lovely seeing Sophie and Wayne, and uh, I, I, I really do um, um, appreciate the points that you're making. Wayne, uh, you may not be aware in fact many members might not be aware of this but I um, I was a former development director at uh, in Lowestoft uh, for First East uh, urban regen company so uh, that point you were making about the most easterly point um, it was a, a core sort of um, flag we were trying to sort of promote and we did all master planning in the town along with Yarmouth um, but it, 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 that sort of um, key sort of linkage and branding is it was was a rallying point, and I, I can really understand in the buying that you're referring to. So I think if we can bring that forward, uh, that would be great. Um, and I, I certainly uh, have had experience of that, so I'll be looking at, at what you're proposing coming forward um, in with great relish. The one thing I was just going to say, I, in, in whatever way I can offer any help. Um, Part of my remit here at uh, Basildon is um, with the economic development, hence uh, part of this committee. And anything I can do to put you in contact with the business community, we run connections with uh, BBG, for example. We can link all of that up to help you with your um, your work. So anything I can help do me. through, um, obviously, Joe and the yeah. chairman, um, uh, please just let me know. I'm happy to assist. Can we can we can we get your details tomorrow then, and, and we can by all means. Can, you know, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. David. Sorry, I think you're the last one. Hopefully, Come on. That's fine. I'll keep it relatively brief. Just just a couple of comments. So, um, you know, when when we look at Basildon Borough, it's a borough that used to have a great sense of civic pride, and I think if anything, the our, our place consultation identified that that has started to be lost um you know the, the, there's a great history here well before the new town came along the new town came along and created a new future and we're now going through another stage where it's it's evolving and developing again um i think the key is when you look at all the different areas of the boroughs i think councillor buckley pointed it out there's many different differing views across the different towns as to what we're all about Whereas I think one of the key things we need to find from, from, from this next piece of work is actually what is that shared value that we all have across those towns? What is our shared identity? Because there is one, I'm sure there is. And we've, we've almost got to tease that out. And that may be one way to, to start helping identify what this, this brand is for Basildon, um, because we are so diverse as a borough. Um, I love uh, Wayne and Sophie, some of the stuff you presented. I like that, um, the, the, the shop stuff you were doing, the um, meanwhile uses, I'm sort of thinking, as we go through um, um, our regeneration of, of, of Basildon Town Centre, there's, there's loads of opportunity there, and I really love some of that stuff you did. Um, but I think that the key thing is, 
you're right. When we get this brand right, it's then about bringing it alive because you can you can stick a brand out there, but if you don't bring it alive, what's the point? It's uh, and the only way you bring it alive is to get the buy-in from the community. So. Uh, Councillor Sergeant's right. This has to start with the community, and and the, the consultations you're doing is is great. Totally agree with getting young people involved. Um, you know, we've got lots of partners at the council and also the youth council. Some great colleges in the town. Um, but social media, and I look at the activity, uh, vocalness on social media in the borough on some of the sites that we have, and that's also a good place can sometimes be good, can sometimes not be so good, and that's the nature of social media. But there's people on the various groups and pages in that, that, that reflect the borough that really want to talk and want to share their thoughts and want to share their ideas. So that could be a, a great place to get a good cross-section of lots of different ages, um, because many people are on these groups of different ages um, who want to share their views and, and thoughts on how we could develop this brand. So um, I'm really excited about this. I'm looking forward to seeing how it develops, but, but my, my key point here is let's make sure we're, we're talking across the borough and trying to find that shared value because that could be what really gets this brand right and gets the buy-in to make this brand grow and have longevity. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, David. Um... Yeah, I'm confident we can do that. Wayne, before you go off to your, your, have your dinner, anything you want to say to, on that? No, I think just, uh, I don't think, just let's just let's just get the message out the next the next day or so before the weekend and try and get as many sure. people knowing about it, and then then let's see what happens, um, see what kind of, just see what comes out of the next two weeks, really. Yeah. Okay. And I just wanted to, sorry, can I just, uh, on yeah. the um, Facebook and social media point that was just made, um, absolutely we're on the same page. We've done an online sentiment analysis and keyword research, and we're now part of lots of um, private Essex face groups. There's Essex Crime, um, Basil Dig Exposed, sounds quite exciting, Villa Ricky discussion page, Wickford community chat, all these things. Uh, we're already there and active, so definitely that's that's a really good avenue to explore. Brilliant. That's great news. Basil and Exposed is an interesting one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you're not on there already, the Van Hill Community Group is also an interesting one. I'm sure we've all got lots of uh, suggestions for you. We'll, we'll feed them back into you. Uh, unless there's anything urgent for Sophie and Wayne, I'd like to thank them very, very much indeed. I think that was really, really useful. I think we've got a far better sense of where we're going. Uh, and I'm confident we can really, really make this work now. Not that I was ever not confident, but I'm even more confident now. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time um, and enjoy your dinner. I, ho I hope someone's cooking you dinner, Sophie. I've cooked it for myself already, don't worry. Hey, there you go. <laughs> well done. <laughs> right, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Nice yeah. to see you all then. Mm -hmm. yeah. See you later. Bye. 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 Right. Well, that was that. I think that was really useful. Thank you, everyone, for contributing. I, I appreciate that. Um, so now I think we're going to, Thomas, correct me if I'm wrong, sort of merge items five and six. So in terms of the COVID-19 local economy and business recovery plan and the impact assessment, because it, a lot of it is the same territory, it, it certainly overlaps a lot. Uh, so I'll hand over to Tom Ash and then hopefully we'll have quite a bit, still a bit of time to raise any issues you want. Tom Ash, the floor's yours. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'll just share my screen <clears throat> with everybody so I can bring the uh, presentation on for everyone. OK, can everybody see the presentation? Yes. Yep. Does that come up? Everybody see that? Yep. Good. Okay. Yeah, we can all see it, Thomas. Wonderful. Okay. I'll 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 just go through and um and if you have any questions, I'll pick them up at the end. Um, I'm conscious of time, uh, but I just want to sort of do it justice. Uh, some of you may have already seen elements of this. Um, you will probably have seen it in advance as well through circulation from Anne, but maybe I can give you some substance now as we go through. Okay, um, so um, 
just as a start, if I may, um, the purpose of uh, the opening slide here is really just to introduce economic development because to many, many members, um, as, as you've indicated, Chair, uh, are sort of recently joined um, this committee. And so it's just to give a, a little bit of a, um, an insight as to what um, the ED team that sits under the uh, growth <clears throat> directorate uh, cover. And uh, I think a number of points that have already been raised this evening uh, relating to business engagement uh, ha have been sort of highlighted here. Um, it's quite extensive. Um, you can see the place shaping um, a major piece of work that we've been involved with across uh, the whole piece of uh, growth has been the National Infrastructure Commission. <clears throat> and um, we've also um, recently uh, had um, business engagement uh, involvement uh, recently. Um, we've been developing and, and progressing on the skills and education. We've had uh, go trade events. We've got a broad spectrum of partnerships that we were engaged with, which you'll see in the slides um, forthcoming. And one of the big things there in terms of uh, making us uh, or taking advantage of competitive advantage uh, in that location, particularly with some of the large employers, um, some of which, for example, Leonardo's who are in um, a multitude of uh, sectors is the digital infrastructure. And that also ties in with the, the business engagement. It also ties in with the um, forthcoming opening of the, uni um, of the college uh, in the town center. So it was just to re really give you a, a spectrum and an insight of that work. Uh, and here we are in terms of partnerships. As you can see, um, it looks quite an interesting dance routine. I, I, I was wondering which steps I would have to take on this, but you can see the, the multitude of uh, partners that we are engaged with. Um, I, I Unfortunately, this um, I didn't have an opportunity in the time given to um, show the size of, of the engagement, but what I would say is, the likes of a seller, OSC and CLEP, um, particularly through the chair's involvement, or quite substantial um, involvement that we have. Our BBG circle is quite extensive along with businesses and we're also um, through Essex Chamber and Education and Skills. So there's quite a large uh, involvement there. Um, and maybe next time when I, when I have a little bit of a, more of a um, space, I, I can sort of give you the, um, the scale and magnitude of those. But it's just to really show you the, um, the, the degree and uh, range of uh, partners that we're involved with. Um, I think this is where I'm just trying to uh, link ahead, particularly ties in with the work programme, which Anne will share with you at, at the end, uh, no doubt. Um, but uh, we are sort of working up towards a new growth strategy, which will be about four years. There'll be different chapters linked into that, uh, which will um, include the skills agenda, the engagement agenda, as well as this recovery action plan. And the good news is, um, and there should be a drum roll here um, after six months of work, but we've managed to secure a new head of economic growth um, who will be coming to join us on the third. And Chair, for your uh, uh, um, benefit, I've managed to get him to come and join us on the call tomorrow. So um, you can participate uh, and you can see uh, who Jim Sims really is. Um, and I'll introduce him to this committee in, in the near future as well. But he's a great addition. Names, I'm not in, I'm entirely sure he exists. But I, I'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> it's a, well, that's right. Hopefully, you know, it's, it's a pseudonym for me, I'm no doubt. Um, but uh, he's got great private sector experience, just so you're aware, um, members. Um, delivered some fantastic, um, substantial um, benefits for a whole range of um, private uh, agency and uh, public partners. So, as you as you get to know him, you'll you'll see the the breadth and depth of that experience. Um, some stats, really, for you here, um, just to really highlight um, the, where Basildon sits, and I think the significant point that's been made. And, and correctly by the chair is the the degree of entrepreneurialism um and, and that's a mouthful isn't it but it, particularly the um micro um businesses which have uh, effectively staff of around about nine or less and also small um companies and in total one is about 88 percent and with the other it takes it up to around about 98 percent of the of the company makeup in basildon or 
small to medium. Um, it's only that small proportion that are substantial employers such as Ford, Leonardo's uh, and CNH. and um, But the other thing to just show you there, look at the actual earnings that are sort of are achieved in Basildon in green compared to the sort of weekly across um, Essex. And when you look at these figures, these are based in particularly um, on uh, our own analysis and engagement with um, Chelmsford and Colchester, who have a similar sort of business punch uh, in the uh, Essex economy. And, and when you look at the other figures, we're around about a third to a quarter of all of the total outputs. Um, but equally, um, I want you to hold one figure in mind when we go forward, is when you look at the number of people that are employed in wholesale and retail, which have been uh, quite um, hit by the COVID um, uh, impact. So um, here's the substance to those figures that I just briefly mentioned, and you can see in the micro and small how much um, is is that makeup in relation to um, um, uh, Basildon. And I think really as a consequence, um, we not only need to be um, more uh, engaged and, and secure that data uh, which we have through um, uh, previous administration and the current administration's insight um, but also it's those are the companies that we should be targeting and nourishing because effectively those seedlings in particular uh, could be the sort of big um, companies in the future for Basildon and I think particularly as the Brexit um, um, uh, period moves onwards those are certainly the areas and sectors that we should uh, focus on. So just um, some uh, concerns that came through on the COVID, as I've said, I've, I've tried to merge the two um, um, points in the agenda. And these were sort of the common um, uh, responses of over 2000 that we received in May, um, and not only expressed by ourselves, but also expressed by OSC and CLEP. Um, and for people who may not be familiar, OSC are the, is the um, one of the federation boards uh, called Opportunity South Essex that feeds into the CLEP area, which is one of the biggest LEPs in the country, by the way. Um, and uh, as an example, uh, has recently secured £85 million from the national um, coffers to bring forward and secure uh, projects, uh, one of which uh, we have um, promoted with one of our partners uh, in the borough. And I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, here are some of the impacts uh, that have uh, uh, evolved as a result of COVID. Obviously, there's some winners and losers um, within that. Um, and we are trying to make sure that um, we are targeting those sustainable economic activities that we can help and assist with through such as uh, Chamber of Commerce and BBG. Um, we had a very early meeting, uh, and there's been many, uh, but we had a very early meeting in May uh, with BBG. Um, these were some of the broad comments that were coming through uh, from uh, partners, and I've tried to summarise it, but I think it also points to my earlier um, uh, sort of observation that we really need to engage with those smaller um, companies to um, encourage and support them um, coming forward. Um, for example, we had three um, emergency meetings uh, with BBG uh, in the early part of the lockdown. We established a business hub uh, early in April, um, which is one of the leading um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 operations that was recognized by the LGA. And I know Joe, in, uh, as well with colleagues, uh, Leslie O'Shea, um, uh, provided a similar community supporting hub as well, which did amazing things. Um, on the business hub, as an example, we, we with um, colleagues from the Revs and Bends in particular, managed to distribute over £30 million of grant to our companies in Basildon to keep them um, supported. And that's over 2,000 businesses. So, um, you know, we are, we are trying to make sure that we are we were helping them and supporting them um, as best we can. Um, and this is just a sort of uh, an insight to 
which business sectors in particular were impacted and have and, and possibly um, will still feel the after effects. I mean, I know there's been a change now when we are opening retail, I'll come on to that in a moment. Uh, we, we are, uh, as a consequence, trying to sort of revive and support um, those um, operations, particularly in our respective uh, town centres. Um, but these are the areas that um, suffered the, the most and entertainment and construction and food services in particular, but they are slowly now coming foot on stream as government is um, easing off uh, with those um, conditions. Uh, but they did take um, a significant hit. And that's why I was quoting the figure earlier of how many people are employed in that higher risk section. Um, some key uh, facts which have come through um, from our analysis of COVID-19. Um, whilst um, we've been keeping a watch and brief on, on the employment, uh, and we know that the impacts will be very serious, and we know which sectors will be hurt. Um, the, the, the issue is that, that we don't know the exact local position as to which companies other than those that we've highlighted um, will be uh, uh, immediately uh, or long-term affected. So we, we, we think people will start to seek work in the stronger sectors. Uh, people will probably seek to reskill, um, uh, maybe even change careers as a result. Uh, I mean, for example, Ford, um, whilst they have a significant proportion of their highly uh, skilled engineers, uh, they themselves need to be um, reskilled to be um, more digitally orientated uh, in the uh, world going forward. And our analysis with Hatch Regenerous, which again was a piece of work that the previous administration um, supported uh, on, um, indicated that uh, there was a growing need for people with um, digital skills, hence the college, and uh, the growth that is likely to occur in artificial intelligence. So if we can tap into that, reskill people who maybe have generic skills that could be utilized and con converted. Um, give you an example, when I did a recovery plan um, up in the Northeast, um, uh, in Sunderland in particular, um, there was a closure of a major uh, brewery called Vaux. People may remember their famous stout um, and the horse-drawn carriages that used to go around uh, the town. Um, but there were a number of people there that had um, requisite skills that were able to transfer into major employers in that area, such as BT. So those are the sort of ideas that if we can tap into and encourage and our advice store, which was may uh, be geared initially for um, many um, of the uh, younger community coming out of school, it could equally extend itself to cover for um, more mature uh, people who are looking for that career change and support. So I just wanted to quote and, and give you some insight and examples there um, going forward. And here's the uh, sectors uh, that have been most at risk. Um, obviously, the um, it's not that suddenly 16,000 people are going to be made unemployment, uh, unemployed, should I say, but it just sort of highlights um, the, the number of people that are working there that perhaps may be uh, vulnerable at some point, uh, depending on the recovery. But there is a double whammy coming around here, isn't there, in terms of not only the COVID, but then potentially impacts of Brexit as well. And uh, it doesn't you don't need to look uh, further afield to see how that uh, potentially could impact on a particularly um, motor, um, uh, the motor industry. Um, companies such as um, Nissan, who uh, sited up in the Northeast, again, I was part of that uh, in, uh, with One Northeast, the, the regional development agency. And they, whilst they gave significant grants and land and support, um, they're very much subject to the tariff barriers. And if the tariff barriers impact and they don't have access to the markets, you can see how they could be, um, uh, it, um, they could change their operations. And I think it's the same here with Ford, um, looking at how we could assist them and we have uh, over the air, but how else we can do that to um, encourage and support them going forward. But I'm just giving Ford as an example, it's not the only company that we would look to assist with. Um, certainly those startups and young um, micro 
um, companies are, are certainly the ones that we need to encourage and support going forward. Um, again, just um, the impact that it's had on the town centre. Again, this slight, it, it may be slightly um, uh, out of date in comparison to recent uh, operations and uh, declarations by the government, but we are seeing the impact on high street businesses. And we've heard in the news, have we not, how we've had differing views um, from um, the uh, Prime Minister and other leading members within the Cabinet, um, how they're trying to encourage people to return to work, subject to being safe and, and whether or not they could do so, because they're keen and um, on securing the high street businesses because retail sector in particular has taken a significant um, impact. And hopefully now with the opening of other leisure facilities and operations, our own um, uh, town um, centre um, uh, theatre and other leisure operations could all benefit from it. And thankfully, cinemas are now starting to open. So our own town centre project uh, with the Empire Theatre and hopefully then the food and uh, beverage side of that which we are encouraging and engaging with a number of partners will start to slowly uh, come back on stream. So um, recovery plan regarding the high streets already underway. Um, the government announced £165,000 uh, funding. We've utilised that in a, a, a number of ways. Um, great teamwork uh, um, with uh, SLT colleagues, uh, particularly Paul Brace um, and his team uh, who have uh, assisted with Bill Ricky and Whitford. Uh, we've uh, in, in, included uh, marshals, we've done uh, markings on the, um, on the street to uh, encourage safe movements. Uh, we've engaged with uh, retailers and we are now in the process of appointing um, a new intermediary to assist with that because it, it was quite revealing when we engaged with BBG that there was very low um, retail um, um, representation. Um, and when we were trying to get the high streets uh, linked in and opening and supporting, we realised we needed to have somebody on board that could engage with that process. And I'm happy to say that we have identified somebody who uh, previously worked on the ED team, particularly with the Go Trade program, uh, who is um, uh, going to be able to assist us with that and form those links, not only with the, those towns, but hopefully help with the other towns as well. But I just want to give you that as an example uh, going forward. Um, skills and training, uh, education. Uh, again, um, I think one of the key things that I, I noticed in here in some of our uh, data analysis, and particularly with the benefit of the college coming on stream, is that um, from ONS, um, so that's National Statistics Office, um, I've identified that those people who have digital skills such as what I'm feebly trying to do tonight. And if you could see I'm operating two-handed with two laptops, um, they could earn somewhere in the region of about 8,000 pounds more, uh, as well as securing um, uh, more guaranteed uh, employment. So it's, it keeps coming back to those, having those digital skills and bearing in mind the way that the uh, future um, uh, industry and sectors will be uh, working. Um, one of the points coming up on this slide, uh, uh, BEAR is the BEAR represents and stands for uh, business expansion and re retention. It's a um, an initiative um, by government uh, towards uh, uh, supporting new inward investment. And uh, there's lots of companies in Essex and Basildon that want to expand and grow. Uh, hopefully through our local plan, if we ever get a date from the inspector, that we can actually um, hold, uh, hold that examination in public and secure the local plan, we'll be able to bring on stream approximately 50 hectares of new employment space within the borough, which would then encourage new developments uh, thereof. Um, and that linked into the seller work that I've been uh, and colleagues have been uh, working on will hopefully then present a, um, a very formidable uh, position to government as to why it should invest in Basildon in particular, because it is a significant 
em, um, employment and business powerhouse in comparison to others within the whole South Essex area. And I think we really do punch above our weight in that respect. Um, just some context and linkages here in terms of what that recovery planning for the, the local economy could be, um, some linkages uh, thereof. I mean, for example, we have been trying for quite some time. The master plan has been mentioned. Um, I've, I've tried not to sort of dwell on that as it's, it's another part of my remit, but um, it would be great if we could secure, for example, the public health, um, the hospital um, uh, uh, operations uh, within the town centre. And I don't mean sort of um, op operation as in, you know, uh, having um, your appendices out, but, but more case of, um, some additional activity which i know they were previously looking at and i think there is scope there in terms of the schemes and um coming forward where that space could be provided uh, within the town center in which in itself would generate employment and also spend uh, within the town center so you know we are working with our uh, public health um, partners to try and support and encourage those activities if we can, along with developers uh, who are bringing forward three schemes in the town at this point. Um, some ideas that we've had in terms of potential actions uh, and some examples thereof to support the recovery within the local economy. Um, you know, they, they could be given to expanding um, our own team. We could look to promote discretionary grants. Um, we could look at creating that uh, uh, incubator space uh, as well as the pop-up space that has been mentioned by uh, Wayne Hemingway in terms of meanwhile uses that you could see. And I have had experience elsewhere where those sort of things do generate uh, almost like catalyst activity themselves um, and, and, and enable the sort of enablers and, 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 and growth points. So very, very, very useful um, for us uh, going forward. Um, I think one of the other things things in particular is when you look at the um, land ownership um, of the town centre there is significant parts of the public realm which are still held by uh, another body um, BTCM and, and we are in discussions uh, through them and um, uh, for example infrared to try and see if we can secure that ownership because the whole reason being is if we, if we can and then we can encourage a whole range of uh, activities which increase dwell time in the town centre, you'll get other activities um, being attracted and, and magnetised to that. So that instead of people only spending, again from our analysis, around about 20 to 30 minutes to drive in, shop and drive out, you'll have more um, dwell time and more activity. And that would in itself lead to the possibility of some form of a business uh, um, investment district, whereby through perhaps uh, encouragement um, and, and maybe just an, an initial take up with some of the key um, uh, operators in the town centre, you could perhaps encourage people to contribute towards improving that public realm. So you do increase and attract activities and dwell time. So it's just a thought, um, it would need exploring, um, but these are just some ideas that we are, are, are formulating at this point in time. Again, um, we can't do it alone and we're not alone. Um, there is that great wheel of uh, a fortune and life uh, and it involves us working in, in close uh, proximity with our uh, partners of which are many and diverse as you can see. And uh, obviously, once we have the action plan and we've got the streams, we can hunt the money. Um, there's always going to be, you know, um, a gold in them, their hills, as they say, and we'll always go searching for those streams. I'm just giving you an example here of a, of a range. And one of the biggest ones is the top one in that slide, uh, which is the Shared Prosperity Fund, uh, which would be channeled through the CLEP. And hence why um, both the chair and I have been um, closely involved with OSE, Opportunity South Essex, um, and CELEP. And uh, through that work, as well as the Acela work, we are constantly trying to secure um, and mine those go those um, uh, funding streams. There'll always be others, and whatever we can, we will. It's just targeting them to the criteria and making sure that our recovery plan and action plan are geared towards it. And 
securing those uh, funding uh, opportunities. So, for example, I mentioned earlier, um, the uh, MCHLG came forward um, seeking um, project ready um, schemes. Uh, we were given very limited time, less than a week, um, in which to uh, come up with a list of, of projects, both within Basildon of our own, as well as uh, partners. We work closely with SWAN as an example, and they are keen to bring forward a, um, an extension of their existing factory. We've been able to secure that on the list. That's being approved by the OSC board, and that's now going in front of CLEP and hopefully into government to, uh, as, as an example. And it, it doesn't even stop there. We've, we've been able to secure on reserve uh, a range of other projects for other towns as well. Um, but it's just to give you a sort of an idea of the sort of things that we're trying to support, um, not only in terms of Basel in itself, but through its partnerships. Uh, just final slide now, um, members, and I, I appreciate your patience um, for that, but we are already in that middle arrow point. Um, we're already developing those actions and cost adoptions. And as you'll see in the work um, plan um, as the final item, you'll see we'll be coming back in the autumn uh, with the with the plan, and we will look then to implement and review thereafter. So I just wanted to give you a sort of immediate, uh, medium, and long term um, uh, uh, ambitions that we're we're working on, and we'll work closely with yourself through the chair as well. But that's the end of my presentation, uh, chair and members, and happy to uh, attempt to answer any questions that you you may have. Tomas, can you? I'll stop the sharing screen. the screen. Thank yeah. You. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. There you go. Right. While you do that, um, so I can see everyone else, a uh, couple of points from me. First off, um, in terms of the Opportunity, uh, opportunity South Essex uh, project with Swan Housing, the modular housing project, um, I'd just like to say, uh, and uh, you know, for some of the members who may not know, Tom Ash has put a, an awful lot of work into that. Um, as you can imagine, there was a bit of horse trading between the other South Essex uh, authorities, but it, it's towards the top of the list there. Um, and again, Tom Ash will correct me if I'm wrong, but it's about a four and a half million pound investment and will create about 80 jobs uh, and also help not just us, but other authorities with their housing issues as well. So um, he's, again, he's too modest to say himself, but great work by Tom Ash and no doubt other members of his team there, re really good stuff. Um, yeah, I can see people indicating, but I haven't finished yet. So yeah, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I can see you. Um, one point that occurred to me and it came up on your slide on potential actions you know, I, I referred to micro businesses and, and you know, I um, can't remember what term you use, but probably uh, a better one than, than mine. But what we don't refer to a lot, which which you did in that one, is startups. Now, startups sounds like really Hoxton and not so much Basildon. So if it's possible to do any work, and I don't want to put even more work on your shoulders than we've got, than you've got already, um, what would be really useful is to identify how many startups we've got, because it's just a much better sell than really small businesses, you know, and some of them will be in the sort of creative fields, the high tech fields that we've talked about earlier. And I think, you know, again, goes back to the earlier conversation. We're perhaps missing a trick in not selling ourselves in, in that way that, you know, it's about business, it's about innovation, but all the, you know, and, and small businesses, startups can become really big businesses. Mm -hmm. Ford started off very small. Rolls Royce started off very small. Uh, I used to live near the original place in Hume in Manchester where Rolls Royce started off, it was tiny. Um, you know, all of these things, Google started off small, Apple started off small. Anyway, get the, you get the drift. Um, mm -hmm. So another thing I'd like um, you to take back 
because uh, it's a concern of mine. And that you, again, I can't remember which slide, but you referred to it is there's going to be a real shortage of cleaners, you know, particularly the, you know, the big uh, full on industrial clean jobs that a lot of businesses are going to need. Um, one of the things that concerns me about that is a we need you know we need to find them because otherwise people aren't going to be going back to work businesses aren't going to be able to function but fairly obvious consequence of that one of the places that people might be tempted out of their present jobs into those jobs is care staff because they're not very well paid and cleaners traditionally aren't very well paid but they might suddenly be becoming a bit better paid um, as I may have mentioned before, my mum was a cleaner, so I, I have a, a vested interest in this. She's 90 years old and still very feisty, so I've got to, uh, you know, fly the flag there. But I think we need to talk to Essex about that, you know, all, you know being absolutely serious to see what, what are we doing to make sure our care staff aren't suddenly depleted when they're depleted already. Um, and my final point for now is... Uh, and again, just to let make members aware of it, if they're not aware of it already, uh, good announcement this week, last week, all merges into one by the government on the trainee scheme, which is glorified work experience, but that's good. Um, I'm encouraging and in talks with council officers to make sure that the council takes that opportunity and uses it as much as possible, but also that we're talking to our other business uh, partners, contacts, whatever, to make sure they are, because the 18 to 24 year olds are going to take the brunt of this and anything we can do to get them into proper training, proper apprenticeships, proper education, we need as a council to be doing everything we can. And I apologize for waffling on. Uh, I think it was uh, DBS first. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. In fact, you've just um, almost led me up to uh, one of the, the main comments I wanted to make. Um, so, you know, during a, a, a recession, and we all know that the economic factors are pointing that we're we're heading, we are in recession and um, we don't know how deep it's going to go, but the likelihood is it's not, it's not looking good at the moment. But during recession is a great time to, for, for micro and, and small businesses to really thrive if they do the right thing. Um, you're going to hear me praise the government now, which is again something I will not very often do. However, the, the kickstart scheme that also sits alongside the trainee scheme um, is a real opportunity for micro and small businesses if they get onto it and know what to do with it to, to start to really grow their business. Now, not only that, but we look at uh, the job density figures for eight, 16 to 24 year olds and it's 8.84. Uh, uh, now, that could, get, that could drop and uh, it's likely to drop if action is not taken. And my view is that we should be helping our micro businesses, small businesses, working with partners, people like the Basden Business Group, um, like the um, Essex Chamber and all those other partners to, to support micro and small businesses to explore how they could use that scheme. Um, do, firstly, raising awareness that the scheme is there. Um, but for a micro and small business, that scheme is ideal to start looking, okay, how do I take my business to the next stage? And a lot of businesses may not know how to do that and may not understand the opportunity that could be there. Um, now, workshops, coaching sessions, that sort of thing, Zoom's great for doing workshops on and getting people together, especially during a busy business day, you can take half an hour, an hour out, an hour out, you don't have to leave your house or your office, and if we can get working with those organizations, those groups out there, some workshops and coaching sessions to help smaller micro businesses explore how they can use that scheme to, to grow their business over a six month period and then hopefully bring that young person on permanently after that six month period. I think it's a real opportunity. 
it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy then because our young people in the borough who are most at risk at the moment of not starting a career then manage to start that career so the businesses start to grow small businesses become medium micros become small um that's a great benefit for our borough but also we're creating longer term jobs um so i, I think we should really explore that quite quickly and look at how we can get those sort of sessions together to help um help our our micro and small businesses take advantage of that scheme um so i'll i'll, I'll leave maybe to respond to that thomas but it, it's just something i was thinking we've got to get on that and take advantage and make sure that the people in our borough benefit from that scheme um and likewise the trainee scheme the traineeship scheme so you know aiden mentioned that how do we explore again making sure businesses understand how they can benefit from that traineeship scheme um my, my final comment is more just a, a, a it's a concern of mine and i think it's something we should be thinking about what we can do to start to address it there's a much wider national issue here that's going to have to be addressed but I'm massively concerned about the skills gap that's going to come out of the lost education time that kids have had during this period. Now, if you look at it, they've, they're pretty much going to have lost half a school year. Um, and I was doing some maths the other day. And, you know, if you look at secondary education, that equates to one tenth of secondary education lost, one eighth of junior education and one sixth of infant education and we know that while a lot of parents have been focused on trying to do the best to to keep their kids educated we also know that there's a lot out there that haven't had that opportunity due to the circumstances those kids may have found them in, themselves in um, mm. where they may not have had the technology to be able to have four or five kids in a household all on a computer having their remote lessons or doing the remote learning or whatever it may be, um, you know, um, or sadly, we know that there was some, there's some families where that investment in the education hasn't happened during this period for whatever reason. And I'm just massively concerned at the opportunity for some of our young people who have lost that educational time. Um, now it is a national question, but also it's a local question because we want to make sure that as we come out of this, that our kids have the best skills possible to, to benefit and to not go into an unemployed status when, when they finish their education, but to see the opportunity out there. So it sort of links into my first point, but actually I think this is a developing issue that we need to be cognizant of um, and think how we can um, perhaps support in that area as things move forward and as we come out of this crisis further and further. Um, they're my comments, so thank you. Uh, Tomas. Yes. Uh, you I, I, load, loads there for you. <laughs> but just, just one thing that occurs to me that might be useful for me to have a little input on is um, the COVID-19 response and recovery group. One of the issues that is one, one of many issues we've got to deal with, uh, and there's a lot, um, is exactly the, David's last point about technology and disadvantaged families uh, and, and also older people as well, actually, um, to make sure people aren't left behind. We haven't got a complete worked out policy on that, but we, we are working on it. So it's very much on the radar, thank, uh, David, David, and thanks for raising that. And there was loads of other points that I'll neatly sidestep and hand over to Tomash. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try and be brief because I'm, I'm conscious we're we're at five to nine as well. But uh, just just to let you know, um, I, I I really do empathise, um, um, Councillor Sampson, um, because of the um, I'm I'm in exactly the same position. Uh, I am a a, a parent, and uh, I've got a a ten and a half year old uh, who is struggling like you know proverbial. Um, uh, and today was her sort of handover from uh, one year to another. And, and uh, not only the, her head uh, teacher, uh, but also parents, everybody uh, briefly on, on the handover said, you know, this has been the, the weirdest year ever. And um, 
not only has it been a challenge for parents trying to, you know, who, we're not teachers and, and I've, I've got every respect having sort of been enduring this for the last couple of months, um, seeing what they have to do. But uh, it, it is a worry, um, you know, for a lot of children, um, they may have a, an opportunity to catch up, but there are numbers who don't have that luxury. Um, and really coming into the workplace, they're going to be competing against other people uh, who who how or even higher uh, qualified and skilled, etc. So you know that trainee scheme that you're referring to is very much um, uh, key. What I would say though is from experience um, of um, working in other authorities and and trying to drive similar agendas, is that um, some of the um, um, uh, the guidance and the support from government um, isn't always in to the level that. It could be perhaps is the, the way I would describe it. And we definitely do need local partners to include ourselves to lend that and put our shoulder behind it and lend that support. Sometimes it can be a bit confusing, particularly to employers and businesses, because the grant availability for the apprenticeship schemes, it's it's like a levy tax, but it's very difficult to claim. It's very difficult to, to um uh, support and get people into there. Uh, we've heard all about the new T levels as well um, and how they impact. And I know um, Councillor Brown, who, who was indicating earlier, will be be aware of that uh, to to a degree. Um, and and so therefore, the whole the whole point of any scheme is to make it as simple uh, as possible, both from a um, applicant's point of view, but also from a, a business point of view. And one of the things I, I was signalling for engaging with those micro and small um, companies. I spent um, two years over in Medway trying to en engage and link this sort of supply and the demand side, um, at the demand side being the likes of all the employers and the supply being the sort of training providers and uh, educators. Um, we, we have two different running speeds. Um, if you can imagine the, the employers are operating at... Um, you know, uh, uh, the likes of um, Mario uh, at 100 miles an hour going down uh, going down the road, whereas the um, uh, training providers, which is quite fractured and fragmented, um, are trying to sort of provide either bite-size um, training provision or the, the likes of colleges and schools are trying to work towards, you know, a certain, you know, period, two, three years, uh, to get people onto a course and through that course and qualify. And it's trying to make sure it's 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 as uh, future and inflation proof as possible that the skills that they're going to come off with that course are going to be suitable for that employment and industry. And I'm hopeful that the college um, will be able to sort of uh, focus on that. And I think the main thing for us here, and one thing I've got in this action plan, is that we connect we act as the conduit and we connect those two sectors and we act, act as the interface to try and bring those closer together so that employers and the sort of training providers have a better understanding of the necessary requirements and um, from both sides and then they try and sort of work together. Because the companies like Leonardo's who are sort of leading uh, in sort of major European fighter uh, technology as an example, um, or screaming out for people to come and join them, but they can't find it locally. Um, and I think that's, you know, that that's what we need to address. Um, and I, and, and I, I think one of the things I'm hoping for was when Jim comes on board, um, uh, we're going to sort of uh, get that connectivity uh, on board and uh, we can start to shape those training and, and skill linkages. So I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to come back and report to you as we as we progress. Uh, thanks, Thomas. I've got Councillor Brown, uh, Councillor Sergeant, and Councillor Fellows in that order. So I'm not. Oh, okay. All right. I, yeah. Thank, thank you, Malcolm. And now Councillor Buckley. Sorry if I didn't see you. Right, uh, Councillor Brown first. Thank you. Can't hear you, Councillor Brown. You're on mute. Mute. Oh, you should be. Can you hear me now, Ed? Yep. Can you hear me now? Yes. 
Good. Yeah, first of all, I just want to thank Thomas and the team, because obviously until recently they sat in my committee. Um, I just want to say a couple of things about the skills gap um, and then try and relate that to COVID coming back. Because um, a lot of work has been done on that. Both Aidan and myself attend regular meetings with counsellors, education providers, um, business people from across this South East Essex corridor, looking at the skills gap that each of us have um, in terms of what employers are looking for and in terms of what our young people have been able to produce, but also what our older workforce that are already in employment whose industries uh, may no longer be needed or the skills they have is no longer appropriate to the, to the environments they're working in and how they're being trained. Um, and obviously we have some huge issues with that. A huge piece of work has been done by Thomas and his team and others looking at what businesses want within the borough and how at the moment, sadly, our young people are not able to fulfil that. And we've worked very closely with the colleges over the last year. And a lot of the courses um, are developing and changing in order to reflect that. Sadly, now linking that to COVID, um, as all of you know, I am a teacher and it has a has big impact on our year 11s coming out of school and our year 13s coming out of school as to what their next step choices are gonna be. We had um, a meeting not long ago, Edna and myself and, and some others from across um, this, the different authorities here, looking at the impact that COVID has had on those students' choices. And what the colleges were telling us was for a lot of students who previously now would be then going on to apprenticeship schemes, that over 70% at the point we had a last meeting and Edna and I have another meeting similar this Friday, so that number may have gone up by now, of companies who said they no longer could provide the part of the training that accompanied that academic course. Um, likewise, the degree apprenticeships, um, I deal with a lot of that for my school and over half of those students who had secured a degree apprenticeship no longer have that for September. So I think, you know, we need to be mindful that businesses who would usually offer training opportunities are not gonna be in a position to do so. And so that is gonna have an impact, obviously. Um, a lot of Thomas's work is to do is working with um, partners and for other stakeholders in and outside our borough. And that's hugely important to us that we understand who they are and the ways in which they can benefit our communities in order to grow both economically, but also in opportunities um, to upskill, because this is what's going to particularly benefit us at the moment. I just want to mention one tiny little thing as well um, about footfall. Um, around our borough um, in light of COVID. And obviously for all our businesses, a huge part of that and a huge part of the regeneration we're doing, whether that's a town centre plan or whether what's the things, the work we're doing um, in other parts of the borough is to increase footfall in those areas. And obviously as businesses, large and small, have worked wherever possible from home, that footfall has dramatically reduced. Um, obviously still at the moment, the message from our government is if you can work from home, um, that is expected to be changing soon to, if possible, get back to work, to your premises of work, because as we know, if you're working in a town centre, you're going to go buy a sandwich for lunch, you might buy a paper on the way home, you're going to call at this train station, get, buy a can of coke as you jump on the train, or whatever it might be. Um, buy a daily mirror on the way into work. Yeah. Or start the day, whatever your day is. Exactly. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be different if you're actually going to your workplace. Um, and therefore... Um, that that is going to change over the what's been able to be possible for our businesses and what's going to be possible moving forward. David talked quite extensively about micro businesses and how they start and everything. So the work that our just to assure councils, the work that our COVID hub has been doing, we have, as you know, two different sets of offices working: those to advise residents, those to advise businesses. We are communicating through um, BBG and, and other groups of every scheme that comes on board from the government, how we can help those businesses be able to um, apply for that funding and advise them as the best next steps. So that work is being doing as we get it. Unfortunately, we're not always given a heads up on what's coming down the track. And so often as a council, we find out what's available to businesses on the six o'clock news. Um, but we have a, a fantastic team who I can't are praise enough who have worked diligently and been very flexible and dynamic in order to try and help as many of our businesses as we can. 
And so at times things might look gloomy, but we've got a fantastic team of officers and um, a lot of exciting things going on in our borough that can grow and can have a positive effect coming out. But for our young people, um, this is going to be tough. Thank you. Tomash, anything you want to reply to that? Um, I, I, I would just say it's, it's primarily um, teamwork um, and not just within ED and that's very kind of uh, Councillor Brown and, and much appreciated man. I will express that to um, colleagues um, but I think what it has uh, demonstrated is that um, officers across all services have been working uh, very closely collaboratively to um, support residents and businesses uh, in the borough and, uh, and I would say the, the two uh, hubs that were established um, is, uh, is a prime example of that, both from the community and also from the business perspective. So, you know, um, we, we've diligently wanted to make sure nobody was left out or missed out um, on anything. I think now we are in that sort of recovery stage. Um, we, we're trying to sort of get beyond the subsistence level. And now we need to extend um, that sort of help I, I keep coming back to sort of, um, um, I, I don't know if anybody saw uh, any of the World at War type series, but uh, there was a great one where Eisenhower um, um, was, was sort of making reference to lend your neighbour a hose. Um, and it's, it's that sort of um, uh, culture that we are um, engaged with in terms of making sure nobody's left out and nobody loses out. Um, and the, the, the biggest um, opportunities that we can uh, promote, um, there is a huge amount of work that other people and other, other uh, organizations and partners are engaged with this. Um, and I, I, I reference the seller because the only reason I mention it is because that is another example of that collaboration across uh, the six uh, boroughs in South Essex to present that picture. And when you were talking about you know, this sort of cultural element that uh, Wayne Hemingway was talking about as well. Um, uh, the Thames Estuary Commission have identified, um, as well as CLEP, a productivity corridor, which comes right into and includes Basildon, where there's a lot of those startup businesses that you referenced, Chair, that are, are in, this, in this sort of arc area, uh, which we could sort of lend support and, and nurture, and they could grow and they could create those employment opportunities. Um, when I did some analysis in Medway previously, um, they as a sort of sector, although not well represented or known, do generate a huge amount of income. And I'll give you an example just on our, on our borders uh, with Thurrock, the high house production um, uh, center is a, a significant example of that. Um, so, all I would say is, we. And I'm sorry, I look as though I'm in a Halloween pitch. I better put a better put a light on there. All all I was going to say um, is that um, we'll continue to do that. Um, and I think it's not just within the ED team, but as we're doing with the master plan, uh, there is matrix working opportunities here across all the services. Um, where we could tap in and, and support each other and drive and drive this forward. And, uh, and I think as uh, Councillor Brown very kindly uh, referenced, work with the college in particular and the training providers will, will help us address all those points that members have raised um, and, and bring them forward. And I, and I think we, we are we are moving into a new landscape. I think that's the, the great unknown and the opportunities that might not have been there, which normally were, maybe there are others that we can um, identify and bring forward. But I'll come back to you all as we sort of bring this action plan forward and I'll address and identify those opportunities for you. Thanks, Tomash. I'll resist the temptation to say I preferred you in the dark. But, um, no. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, well, I think I, I think I would share that point. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what I would say is you've had enough praise tonight. Um, no, I don't want any more. It's it's all my team. It's not me. I'm just a figurehead. You know, don't, yeah, well, don't, well, you I were, don't exist. 
No, uh, teams are made up of good leaders, generally speaking. Um, so what I would say in terms of going back to the, you know, and, and again, you know, what, what you just said, uh, you know, none of us would, would once be in a situation, but sometimes really bleak situations create opportunities. And I do think that in terms of our young people and the training scheme, the kickstart scheme that David referred to, there is an opportunity to get people into the council who probably would never have thought of that as a potential career at all, who could be the Tom Ashes of 20 years' time, you know, and that and that would be a great thing. And that's not just true of the council, that's all the organisations we work with as well. But we need to get that message across that this is a real good opportunity, so let's make the most of it and let's not let our young people down because I came out, out of university I know some people are surprised at that fact, uh, in the early mid eighties. And it was economically, it was pretty grim. And there was a bit, you know, there was a generational loss there. We've had one or two, you know, two or three of those mm -hmm. generations where we've lost a lot of talent. Uh, what I want Basildon to do is not lose any talent. It's just harness that talent. Um, anyway, I am mindful of the time. Councillor Sergeant, I think you were next. Then with Councillor Fellows at Councillor Buckley. Thank you, Chairman. Thomas, thank you for your presentation. I'm very pleased that we have economic development come onto our committee, the um, External Affairs and Partnerships Committee. It, now we, we now have a subject that gives this committee purpose. One thing I must uh, say, Thomas, is that um, even though um, there are, we know, quite a bit about economic development going on in Basildon. Um, we are the opposition members and we're not familiar with all of the partnerships that you've spoken about this evening and some of the projects that you have going on. So it would be helpful if you could distribute a list and, you know, just give us a little bit of tiny bit. No, I don't want to spend a lot of your time, but some information on you know on this so that we can for the next meeting uh, so that we are aware it's like a seller we know about a seller but we have never ever had any feedback over for over the year that's why I asked for a seller to be to become um, an information item anyhow it's been extremely interesting um, to listen to the presentation I'm really pleased about the money that the government has put in. I think the government has been extremely uh, good. Um, Basildon's received quite a bit of money, a couple of the projects, some others might not think so, but even so, we've still benefited from, you know, from that money and we, we, can't, we can't ignore it. There are many, many projects to fund, invest, uh, have time and the, your team are going to find it difficult to prioritise one thing over another. And that's quite understandable. And that, you know, and the, the outcomes of COVID, et cetera, particularly with our young people and their schooling. Um, one thing I will say is on technology, everything is around technology. And that was one of my concerns about consultations. They're all being done over um, the internet, there is mm. nothing, and, and it's like most of the business. We do understand that, but how do we get cognizant and work with those people in our borough, and many of those are disadvantaged? How can we communicate with them, get them into jobs, get the skills and educations that they need, mm. because, if there is only one method at the moment of picking it up, how do we get them to respond to consultations if they are not able to do so? We really, as a council, must be thinking about this and I'd love you to come up with the method, Thomas. Anyhow, thank you very much. It's been a very interesting evening. Thank you, um, Councillor Sergeant. Just a, a quick two, two good points for you. Um, Number one, um, you'd be pleased to note that uh, the Innovation Warehouse, uh, which I, I know um, uh, your, your administration previously, uh, which was um, 
and, and I'm, I'm neutral officer supporting all 42 um, members. But just so you're aware, um, on that um, scheme uh, list, um, we, we included Innovation Warehouse um, and it recently got an airing uh, by CELA um, Accountability Board um, and they approved it in principle uh, subject to uh, the government releasing the remaining funding for it. Um, so I know um, Councillor Shorter will be particularly pleased about that. Um, but uh, do we engage with um, uh, uh, the, the public businesses and residents? We, we have that mechanism mentioned by BBG. I know everything at the moment is through digital, whether it's Zoom or team meetings. Uh, but um, one potential solution that uh, my team and I are, are working on is through the advice store and whether or not we can, we're looking to try and get that reopened um, uh, as soon as possible. Um, we have just made making an internal appointment um, from a, a member of staff as well to try and sort of lend support on that. And even if it's just open for perhaps a couple of days in the week, that could act as a platform uh, in which people could come in and not only sort of look at the skills uh, support, but also um, be a channel uh, to promote um, some of the points that you were raising, uh, Councillor Sergeant. So I'll keep you posted through the chair uh, and this group um, uh, as we go forward with that. But I, I, I would like to think we we can bring that back on stream as soon as possible. Thanks, Tomash. Um, yeah, in terms of a seller, I'd just like to say, I don't know if councillor sergeants were or not, but um, uh, the council leader at a p and meeting a few months ago gave a very detailed update on where we were with a seller at that point. Uh, I think the next p and meeting, which I think is next week, uh, they all merge into one at the moment, uh, the leader will be giving another update. Uh, members are, of course, can... Uh, you know, can 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 join that, albeit not participate in the debate if they are interested, uh, and also could ask your members of your group for updates on it afterwards if you're not able to do that. Uh, similarly, in terms of economic development, uh, you know, we've just taken over the economic development part of Council Brown's from Council Brown's committee. Uh, Conservatives are on that, so again. You could talk to each other, just a thought. Uh, Councillor Fellows, please. Thanks, Jim. Uh, two very brief points. Um, one is the £30 million pound that we've uh, offered out in um, grants to businesses. Oh, uh, sorry, Thomas, but uh, uh, very rude of me. I should thank you for your uh, very excellent presentations this, this evening and very much appreciated. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> but uh, going going back to the question of the thirty million, yeah. this is not, or is it? Is it money out of council coffers that we are getting from the government, or have we already had that money from the government? So, I, uh, um, my understanding, uh, council fellows, this was the the, um, the the funding that was coming from government that we were channeling through. Um, I. If you want absolute confirmation on check and bends in terms of timing, whether or not we paid up front and then we covered it, uh, or whether or not it was a direct fund. I, I, I recall it was a direct fund, but I'll verify and get back to you and confirm. Oh, I'm pretty sure it was a direct fund, but obviously yeah. for clarity, if you could find that out, but I'm pretty sure it was because I was pleasantly surprised at the time, and I, I'm happy to put that on record. Um, yeah. Okay, but thank you for that. Uh, associated with, with, with that and I've heard this from two separate people in the last uh, 24 hours are we doing checks and balances so that when a, a company says we need however much we're allocating them they actually do qualify for that money or is it just you know let's let, let let's make a buck while, while, while we can yeah, Councillor Fellows, I can absolutely guarantee you there's been plenty of checks and balances, Excellent. which is why 
initially when some people said, oh, you haven't give, you've only given out 50 percent or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. That's exactly why there were other councils. I won't name them, but one of them's not too far away uh, that, that gave out 100 percent incredibly quickly which does beg the question what checks and balances they were uh, carrying out so to be fair to our revs and bens team and, and the council staff generally again great job of actually ascertaining you know it's an unfortunate fact some people will always take advantage of any system of any payment system and you know this is a classic example of that but our team did a great job and we repeatedly advertised to legitimate businesses look this money is there and in the end we we got to most of them not all of them but I, I will have a chat with you another time about why we probably didn't get to all of them but i don't really want to do that in a public domain no. but you can probably okay. guess where i'm going with that well, well well done to our officers and you know for, for, for doing that just last very brief point on education it's always been one of my hobby horses if you like for for many many years it, we are where where we are and we can't you know the kids can't gain that six months back easily or if at all but it's it's great that we are addressing as much as we we can with kind of reskilling and education um i feel sorry for those kids but that's the end of me thank you uh, chairman pleasure derek um tomash anything you want to add to that or um or all I was going to say is that uh, that's why we we, we jumped on um, formulating those two hubs. Um, colleagues, uh, as I mentioned, Joe and uh, Leslie um, took the lead on the uh, community one, distributed food, everything. It, it, they did a marvellous job. Um, uh, both Paul Brace and I uh, were supporting um, on the on the business hub with um, Shana, a Revs and Benz, and and. That's why we went, there was criteria checks that we were applying throughout. Um, and uh, we, we were doing stat updates constantly on a weekly basis through SCG, uh, which is a, um, a, a special uh, group that was formed and led by Scott and uh, uh, ET and SLT. So there was, there was really strong governance overall uh, on that distribution and there was updates given on a weekly basis. So yeah. Uh, and we and we we worked very closely with uh, BBG. We did uh, e letters um, um, to make sure that all businesses uh, were made aware. We we were channeling and supporting through emails as well. So um, they they were very well supported. But this is the point I was making earlier, um, Councillor Fellows. This was a, a an overall corporate um, um, uh, officer um, support. Um, uh, ED played a part, but other officers and other services played, um, you know, even bigger parts, certainly in revs and bends. So all credit to them, all credit to them. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Buckley, and then I think Councillor Jeffrey indicated as well, so. Yeah, th thank you, Jim. Seems an awful long while since the presentation after all those uh, points. Um, the, the presentation gave us some quite useful information, but there were a number of gaps in it, which I, I, I don't necessarily ex, expect an answer tonight off the cuff, but perhaps if those answers could be forthcoming. Sure. Later on. Um, the first point, though, was actually about the um, head of economic growth. Uh, I'm not sure whether Jim Sims was the name or whether it was a, a, a nom de plume, so to speak. Um, this is a key role and it's going to be vital for council to have the right person in the job. I never saw any adverts for it. So I would like to know where it was advertised for how long and how the recruitment process was completed. Did we use um, third party recruitment agents? Was it just in house, etc.? cetera? Um, so I don't necessarily expect the answer to that now, if it is fine. Yeah, you've got the answer. Okay, fine. Uh, a number of other points that I, I do want to make. Um, on the slides, there was an observation about um, local people having higher weekly earnings on average than, than elsewhere in the county. Great, I'm very pleased about that. The um, well, question I would have on that, though, is an awful lot of people in this borough commute, commute to London. 
what's the average wage paid by employers in Basildon and is it actually being inflated by commuters travelling to London? Um, again, might not be an answer you could provide tonight. Um, the breakdown between SMEs and, uh, and large businesses, I think, um, is probably something we would all recognise. I wouldn't have necessarily put 98 to 2 on there or 97 to 3. But um, I think we'd all recognise SMEs really are the, the bedrock of uh, our local economy. Um, and it, I, what I'd like to know is what the number of employees or workers, if that's the right term for some of the SMEs, is compared to the large employers. For example, somebody like uh, Case or Ford would employ hundreds, thousands, um, most SMEs, um, well, by definition, have low numbers of employers. So I'd like to know, not just numerically how many businesses there are, but what the level of employment is in that breakdown. Um, and it, it would probably be helpful to know the breakdown of uh, employment by sector as well, because if we are to drive ahead and... Uh, deliver a Basildon that's, uh, that's got good economic prospects for our young people, which several members have uh, spoken about, then we need to know what direction education and training needs to take. And whilst I know that some work has been done on that, um, I don't necessarily know that we've gone as far as we could on it. Um, the, the other thing which does concern me for the future and it was mentioned earlier about home working um, an awful lot of people are working from home my daughter happens to work for Barclay Card in Northampton and she's been told not to return to the office this year um, and I suspect that that's a, a pattern that's followed by many other large employers particularly those in um, in the cities where employment space is expensive um, and many of us now have found that we can actually work from home, even if we only need to make a periodic visit to head office or the city or wherever. So whilst um, the government might encourage people to go back to work, I think you'll find employers will actually see that there is a cost saving to them in terms of premise costs and so on. Um, I was a little bit concerned about the comment on the consultations part where um, Thomas said about a low representation from retail. Retail is an important aspect of Basildon, but um, certainly on the um, consultations which I've done in the past um, relating to town centres, what we have found is that we've had input from the smaller local businesses, the nationals, just do not want to know. I, I would obviously be interested in uh, Thomas's thoughts about how we can actually engage with them in, in, a, in a reasonable manner. Um, and the last, actually two last points, um, one on incubator premises, which, which was mentioned in the slides, being made available free or at low cost, something I wholeheartedly endorse. And uh, when we put the uh, cabins into... Um, Wickford Town Centre linking to the market. That was the idea of those, that people develop a business and then move into something more substantial in due course. So totally behind those. However, if they are to be done at free or a very nominal cost, then I do think there should be some, some sort of time limit on there. Otherwise, you're looking at unfair competition to other businesses, which could in turn damage those. Last point I wanted to make was actually about buses, um, which was mentioned on the slide. I, I think you could probably include all public transport in this. And at the moment, it does appear that people are frightened to get on a bus. Um, I get on a bus, I'm going to catch COVID, which is a, a nonsense, but nevertheless, it's people's fear. So what can we do, probably in conjunction with the bus companies, and the County Council is very much aware of this, I can assure you. What can we do to actually give people the confidence to use those buses? Because if they're <coughs> those routes will be lost. And uh, 
once they're gone, it'd be very, very difficult to bring them back. And Basildon does depend on the bus. So, thank you, Jim. So, that's quite a few points for you there. Right. Uh, <laughs> I've got seven. <laughs> I've got seven recorded, um, uh, and please, uh, if I've missed any, um, Councillor Buckley, um, no, please uh, correct me if, as I go through them, um, because I, I've, I've tried to uh, uh, record them, but I might have, I might have skimmed on one or two. <clears throat> In terms of the recruitment of the head of uh, ED, uh, we went through uh, a third-party recruiter. Um, it was quite extensive. Uh, we initiated that back in, I, I would say. Um, January, February time. Um, I even did a, um, a partial Wicker's World type interview to try and assist with the, the process. Um, I'm, therefore, I'm surprised we actually got anybody. But um, we, we did go through quite an extensive uh, uh, arrangement. It was through Penna. Penna came on board and supported that process with us. Um, it was quite extensive. Uh, we had an external um, specialist on board as well. Um, who uh, self and HR um, uh, performed the interview um, uh, process. Uh, there was four layers, um, two initial interviews, um, and and then one with um, uh, the senior exec team uh, and uh, and leader. So um, throughout there was four um, four layers that we um, uh, we applied. Um, and um, to be honest, um, uh, um, Jim Sims, although it sounds like a code name or a, a, a pseudonym, um, is that is that his actual name? Um, and uh, he worked extensively um, with the LEP over in um, um, Buckinghamshire. Um, he secured um, major um, uh, businesses in that area. And uh, when he comes on board, him, uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll try and save his blushes, but um, I'll be able to share uh, with you um, his track record um, uh, shortly. So that was quite extensive, Councillor Buckley, um, and uh, it, it's taken us six months to bring him on board. Um, um, and I'm pleased to say he'll be with us on the third of August. So that's that's the first one. Um, you mentioned about the sort of pay rates. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, you were saying, uh, how do they compare uh, with um, London and were they, are they impacted in terms of, or are they influenced by the sort of travel? It, was, that, was that the point yeah, you were it, making? It, it was, yeah, it was basically around, if we're looking at average Basildon income, yep. how much of that income is coming from London as opposed to... Oh, okay. Right. Okay, sorry, I got you. Yeah, I, I don't have that detail to hand at this point, um, but I, I can check in terms of the, um, because we did our comparison on that slide, you may recall, I, in the box with all the stats, uh, we did a comparator between Chelmsford, uh, Colchester, that have si similar sort of business uh, output as ourselves. Um, but in terms of London Eye, how much, how, much, how much of that migration workforce um, I'll have to check. I may have to check Chamber of Commerce or BBG to get some more layers of detail on that. Um, we do have access to various data streams, so I'll find out. And uh, what I can, I'll come back and let you know through through this committee as well. OK, um, so how much fire London? OK, fine. Got you. Um, then there was the um, the reference to a number of employees, SMEs versus large, the breakdown in sectors as well. Um, I, I, what I would say, just in terms of numbers, um, on one of the slides, I think you may recall it was a table. Um, we had micro, small, medium and large. Um, in the sort of uh, micro and small, micro is less than nine, uh, small is between 10 and 50. Um, and the large is 250. I think overall, um, uh, and, and this will be a real test of my maths, won't it? Um, I think there was uh, 97, 98% which fell within the micro and small side. Um, and in terms of number of businesses, I've got a number of businesses, I've got a percentage, I don't, and I've got sure. the actual- sorry, sorry to interrupt. It was actually sorry. the number of employees in the, in, in the large- Employees. To the SMEs. So 
I'll, I'd have to come down for the individual breakdown if you want, for example, on Ford or CNH or Leonardo's. But what I would say is, of the large companies operating in Baselden, they represent 0.3% of the total. Uh, there's 25 of those businesses operating in Baselden, and on average, they have 250 plus employees in each. So, so they are a small percentage, but they have a huge amount of employees. Yep. Ford is an example of that following, you may recall, their restructure and reorganization that took place recently. So I, if there's any more detail on that, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly, I could dig down if you wanted an individual breakdown, but that is, those are the average figures that we've been able to establish. Yeah, sure. It's just the, the macro picture I was after that, uh, yeah. you know, if you had Ford's, Leonardo's, New Holland, yeah. uh, each of the, or between those, they, I don't know how many employees they have. Yeah. It would be several thousand, which is the equivalent yeah. Be several hundred SMEs. That that was where I was coming. Of course, of course. Yeah, I, I as I say, if I can get that further breakdown, I'll, I'll provide you provide you that out of the large companies. That's not a problem. Um, home working employees cost saving. I, 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 you were. I think that sounded a bit more of an observation. Um, there may have been a question specific to it, but I do. I do recall hearing on the um, uh, radio fall um, earlier today. Um, they were interviewing somebody, and it links into your travel uh, point as well. Um, uh, less people have been willing to travel on public transport for the very fears that you've uh, highlighted. And actually, when they interviewed this uh, gentleman in, in, in the street in London, they said, well, uh, how are you finding? And it, it was really a, a comment on the number of shops that were open. They were talking about markets. They were focusing on, I forgot the name of it, but they were focusing on a particular market and said, well, it's been open now for, you know, the, the past week or so. Um, a lot of the um, uh, um, uh, retailers in there, like the cafe and certain um, uh, of the uh, trades, were not open. Um, and they interviewed one chap in the street and he said, well, I've come here to close one of my offices for the very point that you made, where there's that there's the cost of actually occupying that space, but there's not now the same level of demand. And I think being a sort of chartered to their background and your property experience as well, Councillor Berkeley, we'll know that um, will have an impact on, and it is having an impact on the retailers in our own Buzzledon Town Centre um, and the likes of Eastgate, um, and I'm mindful this has been recorded, so I can't go into any detail, but um, they are, you know, um, uh, mindful of those impacts as well and trying to um, apply various incentives to retain um, a, as many of the retailers as possible. But it's inevitable that a number of them will um, uh, either reduce, uh, have to reduce their rent, uh, to be able to retain occupiers unless they are, are, are um, uh, locked in via lease uh, in contractual arrangements. Um, but, you know, anything coming on review, whether it's rent review or whatever, or lease renewal, you'll no doubt see some changes in the marketplace. And, um, and I think that's where we have to be smart and identify alternative opportunities. And certainly in the town centre, we need a holistic mixture it's not just all about flats and residential, and it's not all about retail either. It's, as Councillor um, uh, Burton Sampson was saying before, it's about having those employment opportunities in the town centre. And you heard Wayne Hemingway talk about a lot of those meanwhile uses as well. And they can actually be um, triggers uh, uh, for um, uh, other alternative use and occupation. So I think um, there will be an impact as a result of COVID, um, uh, and as Councillor Brown was also suggesting, you know, the more people that can come into the town centre, um, the more likely their spend uh, will increase. Uh, I think it's just a question of um, how and when and uh, what employers can encourage that, um, because a number of people have realised, as we're doing this very evening, we can operate in a digital world. Um, 
And uh, I, I, what does that mean going forward? I, I think our own footprint may change um, in the centre, but you know, I'm, I'm only speculating. I, I don't know at this point. Um, it's early days. Um, your, your other point that you were talking about was um, consultation, low representation retailers. I think, um, I think moving forward, um, the uh, the engagement that we we've had through consultation. Um, on the master plan is one example. Um, individual uh, operators such as uh, Eastgate um, will no doubt be bringing forward th their own sort of consultation as other developers are. Um, there is an opportunity there for, for um, not only local, um, uh, but also the larger multiples that you described participating in those discussions because it will impact on them. Um, we've tried to ensure that in our overall work stream strands on the master plan of which there are around about 16, we have a significant one which Joe uh, is inputting via his team uh, on the comms um, uh, element relating to all of that. And I think through that work stream, we could get, look to engage with those retailers as well. And we have also already um, uh, identified and are in the process of appointing a new um, uh, uh, person to assist us, not in, only in Villa Ricky and Whitford, but hopefully uh, in tandem with the Go Trade uh, colleagues in the town centre itself in Basildon. So um, we are looking to engage with them. Um, and you then also mentioned incubator space, um, whether or not we could support that, but maybe time limited. Uh, again, we did something very similar in Medway. Uh, you use it as a stepping stone to encourage people. You could see the very, I mean, wouldn't this be wonderful um, if we could see um, people, as Councillor Brown was suggesting, coming out of school or college? Um, and because of the very entrepreneurial um, um, uh, culture that exists in Basildon and South Essex generally, um, you know, developing those skills, particularly in the di uh, digital world, wouldn't it be great that they could come out of that college, they could then come into, for example, the innovation warehouse, and almost through that Google-esque type environment, nurture and develop, become a seedling. They, we identify space through the local plan and in the town centre, they could develop into that incubator space, they could then grow, they could then actually generate and take up new space through the local plan. I, I see a sort of a ladder, a ladder, well, I guess pathway, which is the very thing that the advice store is um, uh, in, engaged with um, of, of developing those opportunities. And I, I think if we can create those rings on the ladder, hopefully it will encourage people to uh, participate. And then f the final point that you mentioned in terms of public transport, what could be done? I can only sort of give a, a sort of a, a shine, a, a little light, uh, in terms of what we're trying to do in terms of the Basildon Master Plan by that suggested new transport hub. Um, how people feel in, in terms of on the trains and buses, do they feel safe? Will they have to wear masks? Is there sufficient spacing? Um, I guess that comes back to the operators and how they um, uh, uh, conduct. But I think in terms of the infrastructure and where and how people come in and out of those um, Places, such as the stations, and could we make it a, a better, safer, um, a more hospitable, but um, uh, uh, safer place? Yes, we could if we could create that new transport hub, as an example. But it's working, as you've rightly said, in tandem with the partners, particularly the bus company and the rail company, to make sure that we work. We were working alongside and with the same goal in mind. Yeah, it's just really about. Build, building confidence in the in the passenger that was really where i was coming from you know, the new hubs will obviously benefit uh, encouraging people to use public transport so all good luck to them sure just thank to, you i i hope i hope i hope answered the seven points there i think um I'll, I'll, I'll got, we'll get most of it to you anyway thanks Tomás. um welcome i'd have to deal with a technical issue so i'm sorry if, if i'm repeating what you've said already hopefully not um, but uh, there is a piece of work that's being carried out at the moment to ascertain how many businesses haven't renewed 
the office space contract or have reduced. Now, obviously, that's a moving feast, but it is something that is being looked at. You know, going back to the comment Councillor Buckley said, you know, this isn't just Basildon. Canary Wharf is not the place it was, that's for sure. Um, and in terms of contact with retailers, again, take, take the points made. But again, you may or may not know, the leader of the council has had several Zoom uh, meetings with retailers, Billericay, Whitford, etc. And those will continue as well. So... Yeah, hopefully I haven't just repeated. Councillor Jeffrey has been incredibly patient. So uh, over to Councillor Jeffrey. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think first thing in order is uh, to say thank you to the revenue and benefits team and also to uh, Thomas's team for their hard work. Um, I'm just picking up on a point uh, Councillor Buckley said about um, how we can sort of see businesses I know there's the Basildon Business Group, but do we have anything sort of targeted to small and micro businesses? So that we just, I, I know they account for, looks like over 90%. So do we have any, I mean, if we have, then that's fine. But if, you know, if we don't, looking at that area of, mm. of the size of business, um, and it, it's a bit looking at, uh, it says on here, business impact says uh, Basildon business concerns. I mean, on, on the 15% that have said that they're likely to close, have we been able to help them in a way that can sort of bring that number down? I know they say they're concerned, but we try to see for that, from that number, how we can get them financial support or advice on what they can do. Um, and, and it's sort of linking towards the further advice, I'm guessing that sort of links into the potential funding that we that you was looking at on uh, towards the very end of your presentation, the potential funding streams. Um, I mean, is that sort of part of my question for that is, have we been successful in addressing those concerns and where ha we haven't been able to, have we been um, mindful of the, the skills um, part of that. Um, and then on the next part, it, it says here about the acceleration of online shopping, um, in, particularly in industrial sites, say burnt mills or places in Shotgate. Um, have we sort of looked at prior to this? I remember when I was on this committee before, we looked at sort of broadband and fiber optics. I mean, are we? going to be bringing that forward in some way um it, it seems like it would be a, a, an appropriate thing to do um, on that point i just have to think of anything else thank you councillor jeffrey oh. um um so uh, three things um I've, I've noted there and again if if i've missed anything please correct me but um on the bbg um the reps that are on there, you do have big um, companies, as we mentioned, Ford and Leonardo's uh, and CNH uh, factory, um, a tractor factory. Um, but you also have um, the small uh, um, uh, companies, the SMEs that you you refer to there as well. Um, so it's it's quite a diverse range um, of representation, um, and. I, as I was suggesting in the presentation, the actions I think we, through my team, need to be focusing on is um, increasing that dialogue uh, with the small and medium ones. And I think it's a very good point that Councillor Buckley was making earlier in terms of you could have, once you've got, uh, you know, 0.3% representation of these large companies, they do have a significant number of employees uh, operating in the borough, uh, which may and I'll, I'll check the figures, may equate to um, the 98% the or thereabouts of this, the, the micro to small um, companies. But what the, the overall message is, we need to make sure not only through BBG, but we engage with them as well. Um, we have a relatively small team, but we will um, have through digital means uh, a greater way of in, engaging with them. Um, Coming back to your then next point, uh, which was about the business concerns and the support 
and skills and um, the funding opportunities. As I was trying to signal, um, there is a, a wide range of um, uh, emerging uh, funding um, streams, uh, one of which we've already secured £165,000, which is helping with the high street recovery. Um, uh, the other one will no doubt be subject to a similar uh, funding bids, um, which is the um, UK Shared Prosperity Fund, um, which will come through CLEP and OSE. Um, and that's uh, identified somewhere in the region of about 500 million pounds for skills, but that's national. Um, so there'll be a, a share of that which will come down in the respective LEPs. I don't know what that figure will be for CLEP, therefore I don't know what the, the total amount that we would bid for. But as an example of the recent MHCLG um, um, uh, call for uh, projects, um, you know, out of that 85 million pound, and I've got to be careful because we're live uh, but out of that 85 million approximately a quarter or thereabouts will be probably bid for from each each um, uh, sub-regional area um, uh, ultimately it'll come down to CLEP and government on making those decisions um, but you know we have collectively agreed through OSE uh, which projects and I've given you a flavor and example of some of those there are many more and many more which cut across the whole of South Essex. Um, I think really it's, it's, it's it, I guess it's like the, uh, the Star Trek theme, you know, you always got that chap, haven't you, with, who's got some kind of radar scanner who's constantly looking over the horizon. Uh, that's the sort of thing that we um, constantly do on the funding. Um, there are different funding streams that come out of government, different government um, uh, agencies. And we always try to match up on those criteria, which link into our um, our actions. I think as we bring forward our strategy, and we'll have policy and the, therefore strategy uh, elements, uh, which you will start to see sight of um, coming forward in, in the autumn, um, we'll be targeting those areas of work uh, with those funding streams as well, or vice versa. Um, and uh, the you know the, the likes of the um, the, the recent uh, innovation warehouses is a good example of that. And then finally, on your third point about um, fiber optics infrastructure, um, we did a significant amount of work. I, I showed in one of the very beginning slides um, the the different range of work that the ED team covers. Uh, one significant piece of work that we worked in tandem with. Um, 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 Essex County Council was the um, national, uh, we work with them as um, joint partners with the National Infrastructure Commission. And uh, in that National Infrastructure Commission, we were looking at a, um, an inter-region connectivity strategy of how could we improve uh, the linkages um, so that people can readily take advantage of employment opportunities um, and there was a, a, a focus on providing the necessary infrastructure. And one element of that infrastructure, which I'm sure you've heard through the master plan uh, presentations to members uh, since we launched it in June, uh, has been about being a tech town. Um, and one of the things there, it's not only sort of getting connectivity to bring forward and secure our local plan opportunities, but also a uh, uh, full fiber network, which has been um, a, a key ambition across the whole of South Essex. And that has recently been secured for the area, which is enabling us, for example, to progress with innovation warehouse over in Pitsy. So you can see how the linkages across from a seller um, and uh, also across these other government agencies, such as National Infrastructure Commission, are all helping to deliver uh, that growth that we are all seeking, uh, particularly in our borough. So um, we're just trying to link those dots on the page uh, to, to make sure that we secure the best opportunities. Tom, I'm sorry to, to interrupt, very rude of me. I'm conscious. Um, but um, that's one of the reasons when I think Council Sergeant suggested part of it, uh, that we've got a seller coming to a meeting soon. Uh, yes. and also opportunities South Essex which we referenced earlier so I won't go into again 
I am mindful of the time. So unless there's anything else uh, urgent, I'd just like to move on to the last item regarding the work programme, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah, sure. Okay, um, so the work programme's on page 11 to 13 of the agenda. It is now pretty chunky, it's fair to say. Um, just so you know, um, and, and, you know, it's not just a lot of items, a lot of quite important big items that will take a certain amount of time. So whilst it's all listed as autumn, the ambition, the hope is that we will get another meeting this side of Christmas. Um, but obviously that needs to be ratified by the annual general meeting. So although it... Uh, Given, I mean, I thought we'd be finished by nine tonight, and it's nearly ten, and we're not, we're, we're almost finished. Um, looking at, at the list on there, we'd probably be going till about two o'clock in the morning. Now, I, I assume none of us want to do that, and also it would be, you know, uh, disrespectful to some of the really important items there. So, just so you know, the aim is to have a meeting in October and December, but we. we yeah, I've, I've asked uh, Annie to look at dates in December because I know it's always problematic, but that's life. Um, so, so that we can get dates in for both October and December. Uh, so, the re but the reason we haven't actually formally done it is we have to wait for the, the AGM. Apparently, the reasons I'm not entirely sure, but Annie's nodding, so it must be right. Um, so, yeah, yes, Councillor Buckley. Yeah, just um, certainly in the past, uh, Chairman always had the ability to call a, a, a meeting more or less at whim, provided uh, officers could uh, accommodate that. So I don't know if that's changed in the standing you asked you the, the Council Buckley. Um, I think you're right, um, and I defer to your knowledge on that one. I mean, that's effectively what we did with this one, because this meeting wasn't in, but we wanted to bring the Hemingway design team in, and we wanted to establish the work programme because we've now got economic development. So, yeah, where there's a will, there's a, w where, where there's a, will, there's a way. But I just want you to know that, that, you know, we weren't planning on dumping all of that in one meeting in October. Uh, no, I, I think you're, you're quite right in that. As a, as a principle, but I think looking at the items that are on there, some of them are so meaty that if you had two of those items on one meeting, you'd still be there till 10 o'clock. And I, I think with due respect that you probably need to look not just at one extra meeting, but probably at least two. The only other observation I would make is around um, what the items are. Substantially, a lot of them appear to be information items rather than uh, items where members are going to hopefully influence or change policy as the case may be so perhaps that's something that could be thought about in the meantime yeah no exactly councillor buckley i think that's one of the reasons why i think one extra meeting hopefully will be enough because some of them are information only updates only uh, and i would ask when it is update only, I'm not trying to cur curtail the legitimate debate, but that we don't go over old ground just for the sake of it. Um, so, yeah, hopefully. But, you know, um, yeah, I mean, if we if we need another one, and also, again, you know, the, the best one in the world, Councillor Buckley, the aim is to get through all of these this side of, of Christmas with two meetings. Some of them may drift back it's just what happens now hopefully that won't be the case but if we have to have a third meeting i've got no problem with that you know let's get through the business let's get through the work program and i'm delighted to hear you You're so keen to attend more of these meetings council council Buckley. i'm absolutely delighted uh annie do we need to have an actual vote on that Oh, uh, yes, because uh, there is that the committee considers and endorses the items for the inclusion. Okay, if I've possible. got a couple of indications, Councillor Sargent. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I did notice that we had the local delivery pilot on again. Um, we had one last year, um, I believe, or earlier this year, and then we had one last month. Now that update on a local delivery uh, took around an hour. And I just wondered why it's on the work program for this side of the year, because surely it would be more beneficial to have that on next year's um, agenda. Thank you. 
Well, it's a point. I'm open to suggestions. Um, however, I think like a lot of things because of the COVID crisis, as we had the update last time, things have have got a bit delayed and we're into an interesting period now, just, just beginning, where things are beginning to happen in terms of grants, in terms of activity, all the rest of it. Um, what I would say, yeah, and now, I, I mean, again, it's about discipline. It's about, you know, and, and no disrespect to Grant, who's a massive enthusiast for the LDP and has delivered an, ama you know, an amazing project already and it's just going to get better. All I would say is that if we do an update, I would be looking at closer to 10, 15 minutes than an hour. And maybe as chair, that's down to me to make sure that's the case. Uh, but I, t I take your point. Um, Councillor Sampson, Burton Sampson, PBS. PBS, easier. Um, yeah, just just um, uh, two two very quick points. Um, and I have mentioned these before, but there's 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 a a, a slightly um, obviously with all the investment that we're we're very lucky to see, hopefully coming into the borough and the interest in in uh, developing the borough. Um, along with that comes Section One Hundred Six money, um, and it sort of fits with both elements of this committee. So the external affairs and the um, the um, economic development side, the skills side. I'm quite interested to see whether we could maybe get um, representation from Essex County Council in to talk about their educational strategy and what sort of stuff they're bidding on for our borough, particularly from some of these developments that we're seeing coming in um, so that we can make sure that we're fully abreast of, of their plans for um, extending educational facilities using Section 106 money. Um, I, I guess that sits under the remit of this committee. Um, second point, just very briefly, uh, Rail Forum and the Bus Forum that I sit on, all members agreed unanimously that um, we, we should look to try and get a transport subcommittee, ideally sitting under this, this committee, um, so that it, it's got more teeth and it's in the public domain. Um, so it's great to see that uh, we've got C2C coming at some point, um, but um, it, it, there's, there's a real desire and it's not perhaps one to discuss now, but one to take away and maybe come back with for the next meeting, creating that transport subcommittee so that, that those forums start to have more teeth and more public um, display as well, so the public are more aware of the discussions that go on, because currently they are, they are behind closed doors. Uh, and we should be holding these transport operators to public account and allowing them to explain their plans for future as well. Uh, completely agree on the second point. Um, um, and as, as you said, uh, yet again, COVID has obviously interrupted a lot of plans. The plan of the subcommittee reporting into the, this committee was, yeah, was a work in progress. I see no reason why... That, that can't happen and we should attempt to fast track that but I'm also mindful of you know there's an awful lot else going on I think your point about education in Essex is, is extremely valid um, my only nervousness with that particular one is is again the um, the workload we've got already at the moment so what I know it seems a long time away but I'd be minded to perhaps put that into the January agenda if uh, if people are agreeable about that, and the, and the other thing I would say about Essex is, and you know, I'm not, you know, trying to throw a cheap shot. Uh, Louise McKinley on the curl levers and jams thing came and gave a great presentation. We've now got policy aligned to that, and hopefully more to come. But there are certain other members from Essex Council that are not so keen to engage with us directly. However, doesn't mean we shouldn't be inviting them. Um, so yeah, that's that's my thoughts on that. Listen, I'm really mindful of the time. So unless there's anyone else, if we could just move to the vote on the work programme to recognise. Annie, what's the wording on the work programme? One of these days I'll remember. Um, it's, so it's that the committee considers and endorses items for inclusion in its work programme. That. We're voting on that, Annie. Well said. Uh, Councillor Buckley, can I take your vote, please? You were still muted. I think it was abstain. Is that... was it abstain, sorry. Yeah, abstain was correct, Chairman. Yeah, okay. Strange one, but there you go. Um, 
DBS? Uh, yeah, four. Councillor Fellows? In favour. Thank you. Councillor Jeffrey? Abstain. Mm. I just wonder sometimes if you guys might be whipped on this. Uh, I'm in favour. Councillor Sargent? Last but by no means least. And I'm not whipped on the subject, but I too abstain. Abstain. You abstain. Okay. Thank you. Right. Listen, thank you. It's been, like I say, a bit longer than I thought. Very quickly, just to sum up, I actually think it's probably been the best meeting of this committee we've had thus far. They will be even better in the future, I don't doubt. Uh, and I thought, you know, the Hemingway design. Um, presentation was fantastic Tom Ash, great job yeah. we all know we've got a lot of challenges but I, th I do think we are making progress and I genuinely want to thank everyone for the spirit with which they entered into the meeting tonight thank you very much, good night, God bless, stay safe Bye.